that you are way past your Minecraft time, and that it is now time to begin Space News. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, cool, cool. Oh, no, it's the cops. North Shore Apartments in Austin. Yeah, right on. Cool. Yeah, that's going to look good, man. You're doing a good job. All right, cool. Time for Space News. Still here? Yep. Ew. The hyperfocus police has grown weary after being tricked multiple times, sir. <clears throat> <laughs> All right, let me find something to show here for uh, video. You will not be fooled. You not be fooled by what? <laughs> this time we're staying here until you start your video. Yo, I gotta, I gotta be honest with you. I never really liked Star Wars. Oh yes, you did. Uh, you uh, have the This isn't the video. Okay, no, that's that you're like showing for break. We're not, you. we're not idiots. So. The only one that's worse is the one where you flip around and see the G like a. That one's better. No, Yoda. It's, it's better. Right? Oh my! It's so much worse. We should never Ninja see the other. Is <laughs> oh yes, you did. <laughs> uh, let's see. I gotta find it. I gotta find some stuff here. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Oh yes, you did. Uh. Word. All right. Um, a shuttle film? Well, if we're doing this, uh oh. No. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Bro. You can't. <laughs> <laughs> the hyper focus police is being actively sabotaged by Twitch chat. Stand for this. <laughs> Jesus Christ. That's terrible. Uh, okay, let me find something. Let me find something. Uh. too long. See, I, I can always never figure out if, like, this, it's, yeah, a, you know, know, like, is that, is that good? Because it's blatantly just NASA. I don't know. Yeah, right? Why don't you just play your own videos, sir? <sighs> You know what? You know what? Let's go here. Uh, let me just make sure the audio is good on this. Yep. In the early okay, cool. Let me just get the volume boosted up here. And make sure the audio is good. Days of our republic. Okay, I'll be back in a second here, guys. Enjoy the video. In the early days of our republic, Americans watched Yankee clippers glide across the many oceans of the world, manned by proud and energetic individuals, showing our flag, breaking records for time and distance, opening up new vistas of commerce and communications, 
Well, today, I think you have helped recreate the anticipation and excitement felt in those home ports as those gallant ships were spotted on the horizon heading in after a long voyage. The fourth landing of the Columbia is the historical equivalent to the driving of the Golden Spike which completed the first transcontinental railroad. It marks our entrance into a new era. The test flights are over. The groundwork has been laid. And now we will move forward to capitalize on the tremendous potential offered by the ultimate frontier of space. When thousands of civilians began pouring onto a military base, located on a desert in the middle of summer, early on a Sunday morning, one could sense the day's events were going to be special. Spectators came to Edwards Air Force Base from all over the nation and all walks of life to celebrate the nation's 206th anniversary of independence and witness historical events more spectacular than the typical 4th of July fireworks display could ever hope to equal. The fourth landing of Space Shuttle Columbia, world's first reusable spacecraft. Columbia's first landing on a concrete runway, officially ending the orbital flight test program. Takeoff of the second orbiter in the shuttle fleet, Challenger, on its ferry flight to Kennedy Space Center, Florida, to be launched into space in the early part of 1983. And with Shuttle Pathfinder Enterprise as backdrop, the announcement of America's new space policy by President Ronald Reagan. Beginning with the next flight, the Columbia and her sister ship will be fully operational, ready to provide economical and routine access to space for scientific exploration, commercial ventures, and for tasks related to the national security. Simultaneously, we must look aggressively to the future by demonstrating the potential of the shuttle and establishing a more permanent presence in space. Our goals for space are ambitious yet achievable. We've only peered over the edge of our accomplishments. Surely, our accomplishments began with Columbia's first launch in April Looking back at that spectacular event and the performance of Space Shuttle during its first four flights, there seems little doubt now that it is a reliable, reusable space transportation system. When Columbia first arrived at Kennedy Space Center in March of 1979, there was some skepticism. Two factors were leading to major delays in the launch schedule. The quest to advance the state of the art in space technology, particularly in engine design and thermal protection, plus budgetary limitations imposed on development and testing of shuttle systems. With two-thirds of shuttle's tiles already on the vehicle, it was discovered that the bond was not strong enough to keep the tiles from falling off 
during high stress phases of flight. The fix, called densification, required that most of the tiles be taken off, coated with the material to increase the bonding strength, then reapplied to the vehicle. The process took over one year to complete, but it worked. During the orbital flight test program, only undensified tiles showed weakness along their attach points on non-critical areas of the vehicle. Shuttle's main engines achieved the state-of-the-art in rocket engine technology. But as with any research and development program, confidence in the design came only after years of testing, learning, and some mistakes. Problems encountered during development of the engines were related to the unique requirements that had to be met. Reusability, up to 55 flights with minimum maintenance, ability to throttle down to 65%, light weight, yet the capability to withstand extremely high chamber pressure, pressure needed to generate the thrust or liftoff. Many failures that occurred were due to the tremendous pressures and vibration levels created trying to produce the needed thrust. But one by one, the problems were solved. The design was proven long before the first launch. Again. And again. And again. Four times within 15 months traveling over eight million miles during the first four flights. Three hundred and fourteen revolutions around the Earth. Nineteen days on orbit. But beyond the statistics, a far more important goal was achieved with completion of the orbital flight test program. The foundation for our future was built, step by step, mission by mission. The goal of STS-1 was, quite simply, to get up and get down safely. Columbia Houston, uh, you guys did so good, we're gonna let you stay up there for a couple days. Your goal for on orbit. When astronauts John Young and Robert Crippen heard that announcement, they knew the mission was at least half a success. When returning from space, friction created by entering Earth's atmosphere blocks communication between mission control and the astronauts for 15 to 20 minutes. But it is also precisely during that time that temperatures on the vehicle surface reach their peak and shuttle structure undergoes its most stringent test. On Columbia's first flight, no one could predict exactly how shuttle would perform during that phase. Hello there, Houston. Uh, Columbia's here. Hello, Columbia. Houston's here. How do you read? And we're down uh, Mach 10. With voice contact re-established, spacecraft and crew had safely passed through the most critical phase of entry. 
Landing was the final test. Right on right slope. Flown as a glider, Columbia landed without power on the first and only attempt. They're coming. Go down. 50 feet. 40. 30. 20. Step. Five. Three. Two. One. Down. Hold gear. 10 feet. Five. Four. Three. Touch down. Welcome home, Columbia. Beautiful, beautiful. Columbia's second flight was the first opportunity to evaluate the Canadian-built remote manipulator system. Manual functions were tested by astronauts Joe Engel and Richard Truly. Automatic functions were computer controlled. The arm performed successfully in all operating modes. Preliminary thermal tests of the vehicle were also begun on flight two. One thermal attitude resulted in the payload bay being pointed toward Earth for extended periods of time. During those periods, a package of five Earth viewing instruments, designated OSTA-1, was activated. The package, composed of low-cost commercial-grade sensors previously flown only on aircraft, and instruments flown on individual satellites or past manned missions, collected the first Earth resource data using shuttle. The ability to mount all three types on Columbia greatly reduced the expense of acquiring the data. Okay. 100, 50, 30, 20, 10, 5, 3, touchdown. Those gear 15. 10. Flight 2 proved shuttle was truly a reusable space transportation system. Third flight of Columbia was primarily a thermal test of the vehicle, exposing it to the most extreme temperature differentials it could encounter on orbit during upcoming operational flights. No facility on Earth could simulate the same heating conditions Columbia would experience in the vacuum of space where temperatures could vary greatly from one end of the orbiter to the other, depending on its orientation to the sun. The thermal tests determined precisely what effect different attitudes had on shuttle structure. The vehicle suffered no adverse effects. Evaluation of the remote manipulator system continued on Flight 3. Astronauts Jack Lausma and Gordon Fullerton tested the system's payload handling capability. First order of business was unberthing. Although clearance around the payload was only two inches, Fullerton unberthed in just five minutes, much quicker than had been predicted pre-flight. Using the plasma diagnostics package, seven computer-controlled automatic movements of the arm were evaluated to prove scientific instruments could be maneuvered in and around the payload bay. Only uh, some general comments on the arm operation. The uh, operation is smooth. There's definitely a little bit of flex and dynamics, but uh, in the augmented mode, that's very minimized. Really no surprises. Uh, if there are any surprises, they're all pleasant. Uh, I, uh, I'm really impressed with that piece of machinery. Hey, that's great news, and we were impressed, too. The plasma diagnostic package 
was one of 10 instruments making up a scientific package on Flight 3 called OSS-1. Shuttle's movement through the ionosphere, electrical buildup on surfaces as it circled Earth, and electromagnetic interference between the ionosphere and electronic equipment on board were evaluated by the OSS-1 instruments to ensure that these phenomena would not adversely affect scientific instruments or sensitive astronomy observations on future shuttle flights. On flight four, the induced environment contamination monitor was used to check for contamination in and around the payload bay, created by thruster firings, outgassings, and water dumps. 11 separate components of shuttle's induced environment were measured. The desk-sized monitor was the heaviest payload lifted by the remote manipulator system during the orbital flight test program. Thermal tests on the vehicle were completed during flight four. The first Department of Defense payload was on board. The spacesuit to be used for extravehicular activity on Flight 5 was tried on during Flight 4 to practice the procedure. And astronauts T.K. Mattingly and Henry Hartsfield conducted a thorough evaluation of on-orbit procedures for the upcoming operational era of spaceflight when Columbia will launch into Earth orbit on a routine basis. An ongoing task on all four missions of the flight test program was to evaluate living conditions. Oh. Glaucoma research latex reactor, made polystyrene latex microspheres, was one of three experiments, such as Carp Columbia during the oil center, when the mission control is gradually being reduced. Oh yeah, okay, there, is, there isn't any sound there. This unique device, designed by a fellow astronaut, allowed the user to monitor his own heartbeat while jogging. Alternate methods of anchoring oneself in weightlessness were also appraised. Very busy schedules are forecast for upcoming shuttle flights, when crews will be comprised of at least four people, including women. Procedures on the ground are being streamlined for the operational era. Processing time was cut in half during the orbital flight test program. Presently, it takes approximately 13 weeks to prepare the space transportation system for launch. It is projected that by the mid-80s, there will be two shuttle launches per month. The number of people in mission control is gradually being reduced. Some positions have been eliminated. Others have been consolidated which represents a clear indication of confidence in Columbia's systems. While this monitoring is being streamlined, payload monitoring is increasing. A new area called the Payload Operations Control Center was activated during the orbital flight test program to give mission controllers, payload managers, and commercial users the opportunity to develop monitoring and data acquisition procedures for upcoming flights.
Experiments in life sciences were carried on board Columbia during the orbital flight test program. A preliminary study of lignin growth in zero-g was conducted. Lignin is an indigestible, skeletal substance which promotes strength and upward growth in woody plants. It is hoped that in the absence of gravity, woody plants might not need to produce as much lignin and instead will produce more digestible nutrients such as carbohydrates and protein. The effect of weightlessness on some flying insects, bees, moths, and flies was studied. The project, conceived by a high school student, was one of three experiments flown on Columbia as part of an annual science competition co-sponsored by NASA and the National Science Teachers Association. Equipment to process materials in zero gravity on future flights underwent initial testing during the orbital flight test program. The monodispersed latex reactor made polystyrene latex microspheres to determine if large identical size latex microspheres could be manufactured practically and economically in space. Presently, large microspheres cannot be produced in uniform sizes on the ground. Yet medical and industrial applications have already been found in cancer research and treatment, glaucoma research, and for calibration standards in medical and scientific equipment. The continuous flow electrophoresis system built by McDonnell Douglas Corporation is a prototype of a production unit to purify material for the treatment of disease. The process separates substances according to their electrical charge. Hopefully, yields from the production unit will be high enough to make the product available to a mass market in the future. Results from the prototype's first flight show that a very thin, yet highly concentrated stream of protein substance on the left was separated from red dye on the right. The thin protein stream, only a portion of which is shown here, is actually over 43 inches long and is 300 to 400 times more concentrated than yields obtained from the same process on Earth. The continuous flow electrophoresis system represents the first commercial use of shuttle by private enterprise under a joint endeavor agreement between NASA, McDonnell Douglas Corporation, and Ortho Pharmaceuticals Corporation, a subsidiary of Johnson & Johnson. A unique opportunity to put small, self-contained payloads aboard shuttle on a space-available basis at a very low cost exists in the Getaway Special program. After proving its flight readiness on Flight 3, the Getaway Special was fitted with 10 experiments built by science students from Utah State University and flown on Flight 4. Deposits for Getaway Specials on future flights, private enterprise's interest in flying payloads on board shuttle, missions planned into the next decade, all reflect the confidence this nation has in the space transportation system. All objectives of the flight test program were achieved. Two of the most significant events were not planned. Just prior to the third launch, tons of landing and recovery equipment had to be transported from California to New Mexico, a 1,000-mile journey, because heavy rains in California prevented a landing there. an entire encampment had to be built at the New Mexico landing site, Northrop Strip, and the task had to be completed within four days. Just prior to landing on the same mission, only one and a half hours before touchdown, an unexpected sandstorm blew into the area. As you could probably surmise, the winds have been coming up all day. Uh, it was still acceptable until uh, his last pass, but during uh, John's last pass, the uh, visibilities were unacceptable and the turbulence was severe. So it's not a good day, and we're going to wave off for 24 hours. Over. 
plans were implemented immediately to stay on orbit an extra 24 hours. We've had a good drill. The flexibility to remain on orbit until weather conditions improved and land at an alternate strip could not have been demonstrated by previous spacecraft. Only the shuttle has that capability. It meets a need, providing access to low Earth orbit on a routine basis. By launching on time, serving as a platform for Earth observation and space observation, deploying payloads, operating in extreme temperature differentials while on orbit, providing ample living accommodations for astronaut crews, landing on lake beds, concrete runways. As President Reagan said, the end of the orbital flight test program marks our entrance into a new era. The test flights are over. The groundwork has been laid. Now we will move forward to capitalize on the tremendous potential offered by the ultimate frontier of space. understand why you're so excited all the time about the shuttle program oh it's it's ridiculous that's why i love it it's, it's ridiculous man that like it's ridiculous oh boy i had a rowdy energy drink yesterday now i have a desire to spin people out and blame them for it wait what <laughs> the shuttle's a beast man it's truly i mean you know, like, that's the thing. It, it's not much by modern standards, but you got to remember, the shuttle's, like, shuttle design is from 1972. Like. <laughs> 1972, man. So. Tory talk, Tory talk. <laughs> All right. You want to start with that? We could start with that, dude. That's fine. We'll start with the Tory talk from ULA. Let's see. Let's see what we got here, boys. Last, what's up, Rarest? <clears throat> Did the shuttle use its ailerons for the roll program or the gimbal of the engines or a combination of the two? For the roll program right at the start, neither. Uh, the, the SRBs are doing the gimbling. Eight degrees of gimbal on, on the SRBs. Shuttle engines are just kind of sitting there. And then the elevons on the shuttle went like this. They would they would turn them down to reduce load on the wings. Yep. Yeah, a lot of people don't know that. The the SRBs on the space shuttle had eight degrees of vector. And so same with SLS. The engines aren't the engines aren't being used to, to roll the thing. Uh, the reason is because the engines, the shuttle engines are, they are pointed at the center of mass, but they're not pointed in the direction that the shuttle is flying, okay? They aren't pointing, they aren't pointing straight up. So what happens if you have engines that are out here and you do this with them? Well, you're going to get roll, but you're also going to get yaw. That would make the shuttle do this. It would, it would flip. It, would, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't roll. It would roll and yaw, and it would do something like that. So you, you can't use those for gimbal unless you want really weird dynamic control inputs. Yeah, it would corkscrew out of control because the engines are above the center of mass, right? And don't get me wrong, they are pointed at it, but the vehicle's flying that way, so it, it'll it'll corkscrew. I had that problem in KSP for the longest time with my shuttle. I what like I couldn't figure out why the shuttle, whenever I would do a roll program, it wanted to yaw and crash. But then I figured out that I wasn't controlling it from the right spot. You have to control it from. I put a docking port on the top of my external tank, and we controlled from there, and it flew perfectly into space. SpaceX showed up at the city of Brownsville Charo Day Parade, and of course, they brought a mariachi band. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Oh, that's good, man. I like that. Look at this. <laughs> I like everything about this picture. They put a raptor too on their painting. This is great. <laughs> I love everything about this. That's awesome. Oh my goodness. Alrighty. Anyway, let's get to that Tory talk, dudes, huh? Question is why did the shuttle make the roll? It goes into different orbits every once in a while, dude. Uh, the shuttle doesn't launch just due east every time. Sometimes it goes northeast, sometimes it goes east. It's to get into different orbits, so you had to roll it. Alright, here we go. Hi, I'm Tori Bruno, President and CEO of United Launch Alliance, and today I am your space cowboy. I'm out here on my other ride, Indigo the Rocket Horse. Out on the ranch, getting a ride in on a crisp day here in Colorado, yeah. and I was able to plan this because of the amazing GOES weather satellites that gave me a very accurate prediction of this weather. <laughs> We're going to be launching the latest one, Goes T, in just a few days. It's going to rocket into space on our mighty Atlas 541, the Dominator. And this is a cool mission. These Go satellites improve our ability to predict flash floods, lightning storms, tornadoes, and almost real time monitoring of hurricane tracks, and of course, even climate change. We're going to blast off the pad at over 30 million horsepower, more than two and a quarter million pounds of thrust to take that big bird to the sky. Our booster will burn out in about four minutes, and then the amazing Centaur will take over. It'll That's carry nice. it to orbital velocity. It'll put it in a Leo parking orbit so we can coast around and get precisely lined up with the destination longitude, and then it's pedal to the metal, we're gonna blast it out on that geosynchronous transfer orbit, a big long ellipse with its altitude at geosynchronous, 22,000 miles above the Earth, and then she'll be right there and we'll take that time while she's calibrating her instruments and getting everything just right to raise the rest of the orbit and be in geosynchronous. And then we'll have even better weather and I will get even more opportunities nice to ride into again. Go Atlas, go Centaur, go Goes T, and go Indigo. <laughs> That's pretty cool. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> See you, space cowboy. Yeah, that's pretty cool, man. Beautiful, beautiful horse. Kind of cringe, but it's cool. I know what you mean, but honestly, like, you know that Tori Bruno doesn't give a frick, so it's not cringe. It's not, it's, it, you know, it, it, dude doesn't care. It's like, look, I want to, I want to show off my awesome horse and talk about space flight. Like, there's no, there's nothing here that was mentioned that I don't like. Like, I mean, if I was a space CEO, I'd do burnouts in front of the rocket with my car and be like, yo, this is a cool car, but that's a cooler rocket. You know, I'd be like, mm -hmm, you know. Consider it sent, boy. <laughs> yeah, he's a cool dude. We, li we like Tori Bruno. Tori Bruno's cool. All right, so that's the first bit of space news. So that was the Ghost T satellite that's going to launch on an Atlas very soon. Side knowledge, our minor league team is now Space Cowboys. Used to be Sugarland Skeeters. Ah, all right. Space Cowboys. I like that. That's cool. And then you Mustang into the rocket. No, 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 no. We don't need Mustang into the rocket. We Mustang into the tree. Yeah, just into the tree. That's fine. <laughs> anyway. Uh, any questions on Ghost T while I'm around? Um, no, it's a weather satellite, man. It's it's part of the Ghost program. They're pr they're they're the Na uh, the NOAA's and NASA's uh, <clears throat> weather monitoring satellites, which are. Yeah, they're super useful, guys. Uh, that's the, these ghost satellites and weather guy. You, you, I guess you correct me if I'm wrong. These ghost satellites are literally what like your local weather station tunes in to to, to predict the weather or 
they don't, and they just guess and they get it wrong, like in New England. Um, no, I'm sorry. It's, meteorology is hard. <laughs> Marty McFly said, since when can weathermen predict the weather, let alone the future? Yeah, that, do you remember that? Um, there, yeah, no, those are the satellites that the, you know, your local weather service taps into. That, and they use, they use that and they use Doppler radars. Uh, there's Doppler radars all around the U.S. predicting the weather, et cetera, et cetera. And, you know, like, meteorology isn't just giving you the weather every day, you know what I mean? Meteorology, they use that for planes, they use that for airport conditions, uh, for, for airport conditions for planes, it's, it's used all over the place. Meteorology isn't just like, Oh, hey, we're going to predict the weather, or hey, we're going to monitor the climate. You know, uh, they, they're, these, these ghost satellites are used for a lot of different things, man. But yeah, these stats are imperative for just about everything that we do. Yep, yep, mm-hmm. I wonder if we put a leopard tank under a rocket, and would it, would it survive? Yeah, some of it, some of it would, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've toured the NOAA's downlink station and server room at Wallops. Really neat place. Best part was a monitor with live downlink of the GOES R data, rendered images line by line as they came down. That's cool. Yeah, that's really neat. Starship 4, you go with throttle up. <laughs> Caviar, what's going on, buddy? How are you? GOES T is replacing GOES West due to it having some issues since launch. Right on? Cool, cool. So, yeah, when, uh, you know, let's look at our, let's look at the itineraries here and see what we got. So that's on Monday because, of course, it is. Um, <clears throat> should be around for that. Uh, Ghost T is on the 1st. So when is the 1st? Nice. Tuesday. All right. Cool. Next week. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Because, yeah, February. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was like, oh, that's a week and a half away. Oh, wait. Yeah. Damn orbital mechanics messing up my calendar. I'll be at the office, but I'll try to be here for it. Right on, man. Right on. I just know that NOAA is hush-hush. What? Are you sure? Wait, Falcon Heavy and Starship? What do you mean, Ilya? Falcon Heavy and Starship will launch at the same time. Not, like, at the same time, but they'll be, they'll be working at the same time. Falcon Heavy, guys, we know that at least... Falcon Heavy is at least out till 2028 because of national security missions and if starship isn't flying by 2028 something has gone horribly wrong <laughs> i laugh shouldn't laugh but yeah something that means something's gone horribly wrong Long FAA approvals, yeah, apocalypses, everybody's, everybody wants to get all mad at the FAA and whatnot. Like, guys, it's probably better that you get this stuff, you do, the FAA do their due diligence now. I've been literally saying this since this PEA became a whole thing. I'm fairly confident that the FAA is just using this time to make sure that they got all the ins and outs of how a commercial spaceport will operate. Meaning, not like commercial launches from the Cape that happen, like, you know, maybe every week. We're talking about, like... What do you need to do, and what's gonna? How's this going to affect the environment? Launching every day, you know what I mean? That's the kind of stuff that they're looking into because Starship is new. You know, it's it's very new. Um, so this is a new design. I mean, you guys saw how fast they put the stack together the other day. It was quick. They literally did it in about three hours. That is insane. That's that is. No one can build a rocket that fast nowadays. No, or no one can integrate a rocket that fast. Maybe Falcon 9, maybe, or, or Soyuz, but there, no way. There's no way a rocket can be thrown together that quickly. I mean, we're talking, Starship's going to have turnaround times that's hourly, not monthly, like Falcon 9. Falcon 9's monthly, you know? So I, I'm fairly confident that the FAA's Office of Commercial Space Transportation is probably figuring out like the baseline rules, and they're probably using this environmental assessment as kind of a benchmark for any future commercial spaceports. So it kind of sucks that it's taking a long time, but like think about it, man. What you know, starships are going to be flying daily, and they're, you're going to have a reentry daily. Do you do you put up a temporary flight restriction? Like, every three or four hours for a starship coming in from space? No. No, you wouldn't do that. 
Like, but also, do you need a no-fly zone? Like, there's only needs to be a no-fly zone around the pad, so do you make it a permanent no-fly zone? Like, how, you know, people can't operate drones uh, near an airport? Like, drones are can't, drones are good up to 1,000 feet, but you can't fly them near an airport unless authorized to. Like, what, how does that all work? Like, th that's the kind of stuff I think they're using this PEA as an excuse to figure out. And that's why, that's why I think, um, that's why I think it's taking so long. Oh, it's real, Kaylee. Yeah, that's a real stack. Oh, yeah. That was a real starship. It's just it's just a test article, I think. twenty SN20 is just a test article, but it is a real starship. It has engines on it that work. Are the FAA comments public? I don't know. But, like, fellas, you know, like, we were working on this... We were working on the airport project in cities, and I, I, I can't help but notice, like... I can't help but notice, you know, there are all these regulations for how, like, runways need to be set up. There's all these regulations for, uh, like, how an airport sends and receives planes, like, you know, taxiways, glides. There's all these rules. And I can't help but think in the back of my mind that if, you know, if we want Starship to, to work like an airplane, it's going to need rules. Like, I don't know how a taxiway, like, how is a taxiway going to work? Are we going to have a jetway for Starship? Is Starship going to... Like, is there going to be, like, a terminal for a Starship where people can get on the thing and, like, then they get into Starship, they strap in, and then an SPMT takes them to the pad, and then they lift them up and put it on? Like, how's that all going to work? Are we going to need taxiways? Like, how is this? I'm pretty sure that's the kind of stuff they're trying to figure out. Uh, maybe maybe not, like, taxi space taxiways or something. It's it's more or less they're figuring out the impact of, like, what, what this is going to do for launching and landing every freaking day. A big forklift. I mean, that's what the chopsticks are, right? How will priority boarding work? Like, Miles, this is the stuff that they're going to need to think about. <clears throat> I mean, space it's no secret that SpaceX wants to do point-to-point. -point. You know? Uh, it's. I mean, it's no secret. So, yeah. Would it be covered by TSA? I mean, actually, U.S. Customs checkered. It, it would be U.S. Customs because I don't think flying point to point from the U.S. on a starship really makes a lot of sense. In the same exact way that you wouldn't, you wouldn't use, like, you wouldn't use a 747 to go from, like, New York to Florida. That doesn't make any sense. You'd use a smaller regional plane. Anyway, they would probably make it a restricted area. Different than a TFR, they can go hot at a moment's notice, and the ATC is advised when they do go hot. They are, they are published, and the pilots are just aware they exist and must ask the controlling agency if they're hot. What, what do you mean by hot? Like, is that like a, an acronym for something? You're just hot like, they're you know, oh, it's coming in hot. It's landing. <laughs> like, Starship, hot equals active. Okay. Yeah, I mean, because... You know, I'm thinking about it. Starship is going to need unrestricted descent from, like, 30,000 to, to sea level. Like, it's going to need an unrestricted descent, and it's that that's going to need to be, like, this shape, right? But up to 30... It needs to be able to come down and land. So, there's going to there's gonna have to be some kind of... Uh... Yeah, there's got to... Yeah, see, this is the kind of stuff that's important to understand. Now, I think the programmatic environmental assessment is just figuring out what that's going to do to the environment around Boca Chica, but... The, the science that's done here and the analysis that's done here for this PEA, I have a feeling it's going to set the bar for any other commercial spaceports. I, I really do. I think the, the reason why the FAA is dragging their feet, which they aren't, uh, is because they're really trying to get all this stuff done. So they only need to do one crazy environmental impact analysis and then Starship ports can pop up all over the place, right? Like, I mean, I can hope. <laughs> Sonic booms and noise pollution apocalypsis. Yeah. Hey, human person. What's going on? Yeah, no, that's... That, guys, th this is why the FAA exists, to think about all these problems. So, remember, don't go barking up their tree. 
It's not... Don't go barking up their tree. It's not... It's not... That's not what's going on. And you know that's not what's going on. Also, there's a few thousand comments. 19,000. Yeah. A lot. I'm altering the deal. Freya, I don't alter it any further. Yeah. Exactly, Tesla. Yep. It flies when it flies. Trust me. Now's the time to be patient. They're, they're, they're letting the water come in behind the dam, and then you know when the when it when it's ready to go, they'll open the floodgates and boom, you get a wave of space flight all the time. Which would be pretty cool. That'd be pretty. That'd be pretty freaking cool, man. Pretty freaking cool. All right. You guys want to bite a crap sandwich today, or do we not want to? Might as well rip off the band-aid. Okay. I've been a little, eh, because of what's been going on in the world lately, and I've been kind of like, I've been kind of hesitant to share, like, what's going on with space news, right? So the reason why is because, you know, with space flight, it's important to take your time and understand what's going on. Now, <laughs> Wario memes. Ah! I've kind of come to terms with how the world is. It was, I'm, I'll admit, I was a little scared the past couple of days, and it really made me not want to stream. Uh, but um, I've come to terms with what's going on, and, you know, we'll, we'll go from there. So, um, so the question I keep getting asked is, asked is with what's going on it, between the Ukraine and Russia right now, uh, is it going to put strain on the ISS? Well, <clears throat> the honest answer to that is that it's hard to say. However, I do have some stuff that I can show you if you want. Um, so... Guys, look, I never thought my hand would be forced kind of like this, but if we're going to dive into some Rule 8 stuff, I'm going to make sure that I'm not going to interject opinion. I'm just going to show you what's going on, and then maybe after that I'll tell you what I think. Okay? So, you're going to have to bear with me. I, 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 I kind of had hoped that Space News would never have to involve current events going on in the world, but look, that's part of it, so... With that being said, let's go forward. Please, 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 for the love of God, don't don't freak out. Just bear with me, okay? I'm going to try to remove as much opinion as I can from this. With that being said, there's still analysis of words, okay? Because, once again, I'm fairly confident here something got lost in translation. But, with that being said, here we go. We're going to read with it, and once again, you might not like... You might not like these words, but it's important to understand context. So, let's go. Dimitri Rogozin went on a little bit of a Twitter rant. Uh, who, Dimitri Rogozin is the head of um, Roscosmos, the Russian space program. He's a very, very, very hardcore Russian nationalist. Like, he, he really likes Russia. That's fair. There's nothing wrong with loving your country. I get that. I understand it. He went on a little bit of a tirade on Twitter. And, I mean, it's... There's some crap posting going on, but I'm going to read it to you, and I'm going to explain to you what I think he's getting at. So, here we go. So, he says, sanctions of Alzheimer. He said, the U.S. president said new sanctions would affect the Russian space program. Okay. It remains to see the details of, of one... Do you want of what the sanctions are? One, do you want to block our access to radiation-resistant microelectronics? Because you, you already did that in 2014. As you notice, we nevertheless continue to make our own spacecraft, and we will, we will keep doing so by expanding the production of necessary components and devices at home. Two, do you want to ban all countries from launching their spacecraft on the most reliable Russian rockets in the world? This is how you're already doing that and are planning to finally destroy the world market of space competition from January 1st, 2023 by imposing sanctions on our launch vehicles. We're aware of this because it's not news. We're ready to act here too because you, I mean, yeah, it's already happened. Three, do you want to destroy cooperation on the ISS? 
This is how you already. This is you. This is how you already do it by limiting limiting exchanges between our cosmonaut and astronaut training centers. You want to manage the ISS by yourself? Maybe the president is off topic, so explain to him that the correction of the station's orbit, its avoidance of dangerous rendezvous with space, with space garbage, with which your talented businessmen have polluted the near Earth, all around near Earth orbit, is produced exclusively by the engines of the Progress MS cargo ships. If you block cooperation with us, who will save the ISS from an uncontrolled orbit and fall into the United States or Europe? There's also the option of dropping a 500 ton structure on India and China if there's no collision avoidance system. Once again, important to remember that. Do you want to threaten them with such a prospect? The ISS does not fly over Russia, so the risks are all yours. Are you ready for them? Gentlemen, when planning sa sanctions, check those who generate them who, who generate them for illness. <laughs> Check for Alzheimer's, just in case, to prevent your sanctions from falling on your head. And not only in a figurative sense. Therefore, for the time being, as a partner, I suggest that you do not behave like an irresponsible irresponsible gamer and disavow the statement about Alzheimer's sanctions. Friendly advice. So. That is a response because President Biden had a, a speech the other day condemning Russia and what they're doing in the Ukraine, okay? And he said, off the, I'm pretty sure it was off the cuff, he said that this could affect our cooperation in space. So, that this is a response to that. Now, fellas, I'm not going to sit here and lie to you. There is a lot, with what's going on between Russia and the Ukraine, there is a lot of great sources, there's a lot of great primary sources on both sides here. But there's a there is a metric ton of fake news being put around all over the place and it's it's really hard to wade through it all that's what i that's why i've been so stressed out the past couple of days because i'm trying to wade through what the frick is going on and how it pertains to space now i'm not here to tell you about what's going on on the ground how does this pertain to space well what's going on here is that I mean, long story short, you know, a lot of people took this completely out of context and they, you know, took an excerpt from what Dimitri was saying right here and took that at literal value, which is very annoying. All right. Uh, so they took they took this particularly that part completely out of context. You know, progress MS cargo ships. If you block cooperation with us, who will save the ISS from an uncontrolled deorbit or fall into the United States? That immediately got misconstrued as Russia wants to crash the ISS into the U.S. <laughs> that's not how that works, at all. That's not what he's taught. That's not what he's saying. And once again, this is why context matters and you really have to understand what before you weigh in on something. What did I say the other day? I'm not weighing in on nothing until I figure out what the frick is going on. So, this whole thing about, you know, crashing the ISS into the United States is bull. That's, that's, whoever insinuated that that's even what he said in any context is completely wrong. And I'll be honest with you. It's very annoying when, you know, it's very annoying when somebody on the other side in this particular scenario, I mean, I'm American and we're not involved here, right? You know, when somebody on the Russian side is trying to communicate and trying to tell you something and everybody spins it completely out of context. That kind of crap is how stuff gets worse, all right? That's how stuff gets worse, not better. And no one here can, I don't think that's really open for debate, okay? With, yeah, guess who reported on it, Panta? The bit I don't get is how he said the ISS doesn't fly over Russia. It, it flies over, it doesn't fly over the populated areas of Russia, Brimo. That's what he's getting at. The other thing that he's getting at is that he said, look, you know, you've already sanctioned us. All, the 2014 sanctions already choke, is choking off our space program. What are you going to do more? You're gonna, you, are you going to say we can't go to the ISS? Do you know how to operate the Russian modules on the ISS? I mean, if you do, have at it, man. Like, that's basically what that, I'm, I'm pretty sure. And I've, I've talked to a couple people that speak Russian about this. I'm pretty sure that's what he's saying. He's like, you already sanctioned the hell out of us. Do you want to just eliminate the competition by sanctions? Is that how this is going to work? It, it's, I'll admit, 
that's not really what I expected him to say. Um, I'm pretty sure that Trump lifted the 2014 sanctions on him. Uh, not, not when it comes to space flight, Jason, from what I understand. But then again, that wasn't a presidential decree. Congress is the one that sanctioned the space program. The reason our space program is the way that it is is from those 2014 sanctions. Uh, we can't procure RD-180s anymore, so that forced ULA to make an LNG first stage and use BE-4s instead of keeping instead of still using an Ergomash stages uh, or an Ergomash engines. The, the, they, the sanctions come from Congress. They're not via an executive order. When it comes to the space program, I don't know about anything else. I, I this is my the space flight stuff is my ballpark. Okay. And Rogozin himself was sanctioned. Yeah, exactly. That's true. Congress said that Dmitry Rogozin is not allowed into the United States because of the 2014 sanctions, because Dmitry is uh, very close to his boss. His boss is, is, is Vladimir Putin. They're very close to each other. Him, Lavrov, they're all, they're all the same, same party. You know, they're all, they're all buddies. You know what I mean? Like, how Bill Nelson is a uh, buddy of the U.S. president right now, right? Like, th they're all kind of on the same side there. So they sanctioned him personally. Uh, he can't, he, he can't, he, dude, even if a cosmonaut launches from U.S. soil on a dragon, which that might, that seems like it's a little bit on the unlikely side right now. But if that, if that happened, he wouldn't be able to come here. He wouldn't be able to come to the U.S. to watch one of his cosmonauts go into space on an American capsule. Discovery, right. go throttle up. Yeah, leg. Like, it's very strange. Th that's what I'm getting at, fellas. This right here does not make sense. Because you would expect him to be super gung-ho about it and not give a frick about the sanctions and not... and be like, screw you, we'll do it ourselves, blah, 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 blah. But that's not what he's saying. That's not what he's saying. It, it's not. It, the you got to read the whole context. You can't just look at I'm going to deorbit into I'm going to deorbit the ISS into the into the into the United States or Europe. That's not what he's saying. He's saying you've already sanctioned the frick out of us. Are you just trying to eliminate competition via, via sanctions? You need us with the ISS you, because we do the collision avoidance. Now, I think it's important to say that also he's not saying that we couldn't do it alone. He's asking us if we want to. Does that make sense? And once again, I'm not <laughs> This isn't this isn't a, like a ploy to be like oh Dimitri's a good guy or what he wants is totally cool no like what's going on on the ground is not good it's not a good thing okay and you know it took me two days to get the balls to freaking sit here to get in here and talk to you guys about it because it, this is information that needs to be said it's very interesting and this is this is my like I'm gonna pivot a little bit and tell you guys what I think I I wasn't expecting this from him. I really wasn't. He's saying, look, I don't want to stop working with you guys on the ISS, but if you if you screw me out of if you screw me out of working on the ISS with you, then no more international cooperation. Like, do you want to flush that down the toilet? Which is that's a very interesting way to look at it. I mean Cygnus could do it, Vasya, but what's Cygnus gonna launch on? An Antares rocket? With a Ukrainian core stage and Russian engines. Hmm, how's it going to get up there? Now, don't get me wrong, Cygnus can launch on Atlas, but every single Atlas is sold. And what engines does Atlas use? It could, yeah, no, it could go on Vulcan. We, we could probably even put it on Falcon, right? See, that's, it's a very interesting thing. And this is something that, this is something, and okay, so once again, I'm not a native Russian speaker, so you guys tell me if I'm getting my interpretation wrong. The, Rogozin is, he's one of Putin's buddies. Like, that's, there's, no, there's no getting around that, okay? He, he is. They, they, they've been friends for a long time. But it goes back to a theory that I've been saying about Dmitry Rogozin for a little while, and I can't prove it. I think he likes space more than bullcrap on the ground. Because look, even when the crap has completely hit the fan, you'd expect this guy to be like, screw you, we can do it ourselves. Russian rockets, Russian soil, Russian space station, kiss my behind. That's kind of what you'd expect, right? But that's not what he said. 
That is the farthest thing from what he said. He said, look, you're already sanctioning the trash out of us, basically to the point where we can't compete. So what do you want to do? You just want to eliminate us as a partner to the ISS? Uh, we don't want that, which is very interesting. That's not, that's not what I was expecting, you know? It, it, that's, I'll admit, that is that is not what I expected him to say because, you know, Vasi, I don't know if you've been following him. He was like super gung-ho about glory to Russia, glory to this, glory to that. Like, and now all of a sudden he's like, wait, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. No, 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 no. Let's, let's chill for a second here. That it's very, that's very strange. It's very strange to me. Glory to Glorzo. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, Tori said the engines for Atlas are already bought and stored in the U.S. Yeah, they already procured them. Some minor space news. It seems like Elon enabled Starlink in the Ukraine. No way. It's out of character. That's what I'm... Well, it's not out of character, Firework. It's something that I've noticed from Dimitri for a very long time. I really take his what he says seriously, and I don't try to jump to conclusions because it's a language that I don't understand. You think someone would do that nowadays? Just take stuff out of context for a language that has a lot of words that don't translate correctly into English? That's never happened before, is it? Yeah, Venus is a Russian planet, though. <laughs> I'm pretty sure many of the higher echelon politicians here are going, yeah. No, Vasi, I'm with you on that one. I'm with you. Yeah. No, I. from what I've been able to read about this and read and learn and understand, and that, guys, I'll be honest, that's part of the reason why I've been, th the last two streams were very short. Because I'm trying to figure out what the frick is going on. And you know what? I don't give a frick if I have to go watch TASS or Novosti or something. I don't care. I'll watch CNN if I could get some good information from it. And you know, to be you, to be 100%, the information hasn't been bad. But you know what I do? You know how I know the information isn't bad? Because if Fox News and CNN and Novosti are all saying the same thing, then it's probably true. That's what you got to do in this day and age. You got You can't... You can't rely on one source of information. There has to be a check and balance. I cross-reference like a motherfucker, Dude, I went, I was, last night, I was reading Putin's speech on why his justification for invading the Ukraine. You think I wanted to do that? No, but it's important to understand context. You know, eh, Pop Bear, his justification's a little bit, a little bit more than just, oh, I want the Soviet Union back. No, I mean, it's not. I'll be a hundred percent real with you. It's not. Yeah, Hellfish. I've been also following on Twitter, and I've been seeing your conversations with Sid about things and whatnot. I've been following, dude. I will take in as much information as I want. A wider data set will give you a more accurate amount of information. That's what I do. Anybody that's foolish enough to rely on one source is crazy, especially with what's going on right now. There's so much, dude. There's so much fake. Not fake news, but I don't, I don't like that term. There's people that are, they're posting unconfirmed sources left and right. It's ridiculous. To the point, to the point where the freaking Ukrainian president had to be like, no, no, stop, be careful. Like he, he, he had to post, he put, he like guys in the middle of fighting a war and he had to post on Twitter to say, Hey, don't believe, don't believe this nonsense. Like that's ridiculous. The, the, the amount of mi like not I don't see like I don't throw it like throwing around buzzwords like fake news misinformation screw that there's just unconfirmed sources all over the place heck somebody somebody posted some footage from Arma 3 the other day of a MiG getting shot down in Arma 3 and they reported it as news and a news agency picked it up and started showing it on national television It was DCX? Oh, that's even worse. <laughs> like, that that's how bad it is, man. You gotta be very careful, all right? Not the first time. Vasya, I can't believe this, dude. Like, you got countries crap posting about other countries on Twitter. You got the Ukrainian president tweeting from a freaking war zone. Like, what the hell is going on? What happened? Like, what, like, what the frick is this? I don't understand. <laughs> So you got to be careful with this stuff. And like I said, dudes, I straight up, like I'm usually, I usually don't like even mentioning names here, but I, I was, I was up reading Putin's speech last night about his justification for invading the Ukraine because I want to learn. I want to understand. And you know what? It was a little bit reassuring because everybody, everybody on the, the Western media is saying he's lost his freaking mind. Everybody's saying he's crazy. And you know, we don't need an unhinged person with access to nuclear weapons. I think North Korea is a good case study as to why. 
But the, the speech was at least mildly reassuring that he hasn't lost his freaking bananas, man. Like, I get the justification. It's a little flimsy. It's like, all right. But I do, I, I understand. I, and I have that perspective now. And that's important. It's so ridiculously important, man. The last thing that you want to do when there's a freaking war going on is jump to conclusions. That's so, that is so bad and it makes the problem way worse, okay? That speech was recorded the same day as the speech he gave that Monday. Yeah, yeah, Hellfish, I, I've read most of them. The... I mean, the guy is at least well versed in his history. I, I, you know, gotta give credit where credit is due. And don't get me wrong, like it is very unfashionable to even give him any credit about anything right now. But look, I knew this space news was coming, and I knew speaking the truth, people would not like it. But it's important to understand the context, man. I'll, you, like, dude. <sighs> Restricting dialogue between two fighting nations is how stuff gets worse. It's how stuff gets worse. We can't do that. You can, can't be doing that crap. That history lesson, lesson of his was very perverted. Yeah. I mean, Vasi, that's what I mean. The guy knows his history, but his interpretation of history is a little... Bro, what do you... That's the conclusion that you drew? Okay. <laughs> Like, Vasi, I can tell that he knows what he's talking about, and I can tell that he knows enough about history to be able to twist the perspective a little bit. It's really it's really easy to spot. Like, and don't get me wrong, like, he's, dude, like, I'll, I'll be very candid with you because, you know, we're laying it on the table. He's an asshole. Of course he's an asshole. Fucking asshole. Like, what do you want? But just because he's, he's an asshole doesn't mean that he isn't smart. I mean, it gets, the guy's a spook. What do you want? In the same vein, why talk when there's when it's obvious that there's no good outcome? Well, Hellfish... Yeah, I guess, dude. But you know what, man? I don't like war. I really don't. And this, once again, this is kind of more personal, more personal for me. If you guys don't... If you guys don't... People don't agree with me on this one. Look, I'm already hanging a lot of dirty laundry out this space news already. So, you know, as long as we're here, I, dude, I don't care. I want to understand. I want to understand our aggressor. I want to understand like, okay, so Russia's the bad guy, right? Cause we're, we're, we're the West. So Russia's, Russia's the bad guy, right? Of course, Russia's the bad. Why, why do we think this? That's what I want to understand. And that sometimes means examining both sides. I'm interested in what's going on, and that's it. I don't have any. I swear to God, the only thing that I, the only thing that I, the only axe that I have to grind here is what's going on with space. Other than that, I'm interested in context, because context is important to understand to understand what's going on in space. Space is complicated, and the circumstances in which the ISS came about are very complicated as well, and it's important to understand that, man. Look. We play Hearts of Iron all the time on stream, and we have fun with it. It's a good time, right? But it's in a video game, first of all, and not in real life. In real life, yeah, hard pass. But the reason why I can manipulate Hearts of Iron, I mean, badly at this point. I still suck at it, for what it's worth. Um, the reason why, you know, is because with historical focuses on, I can understand what the other side's going to do. Point is, during World War II, I didn't just study the American perspective of it. You study everyone's perspective, all right? Everything. Why the Japanese did what they did. Why the Germans did what they did. It's important to understand that context, okay? It's very important. And it's more important that once you understand that context that you can convey it. I cannot stress this enough. Sorry that you have to go through this. Alexiev, it is what it is, man. Look. I I had a feeling that Space News someday would get to this point. Not 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 I no nobody saw what was coming in the past couple of days. I'll admit that I'm not that smart. Um but I eventually eventually it would have to, you know, I was wondering when Rule 8 would veer its head into Space News and I always told myself that if that was the case, I'm going to I'm just going to tell you guys what's going on. You can think about it however the frick you want to. Sun Tzu was a very smart man. Yeah, exactly, Top Hat. Yep. I will not 
I'm not going to sit here. I, I will tell you if I'm giving you my hot take on the subject. I will tell you that it's very much opinion. And my opinion is open for interpretation. But the facts I don't think are. So, in the context of what's going on here, a lot of people took what Dimitri was saying out of complete con... They took it completely out of context. And it's... You know what? It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous and that crap needs to stop. Okay? It needs to stop. It, 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 you know, I heard, I saw official German sites reporting that Dmitry Rogozin wants to crash the ISS into the United States. That's pathetic. It's pathetic. It's pathetic. And I ain't going to be like that. No. Mm -mm. Pause there. Let me read or give me a link. Sure, man. I'll link you to the thread. I understand what he's saying. I get it. I understand the context. And, but like I said, it's not what you'd expect. Like, what worries me is that Russian protesters were all arrested in a few... Yeah, Alexiev, how about the balls on those people? You're going to protest against... You're going to protest against Vladimir Putin? That's how bad... That's how bad it is, dude. Like, dude, you are you nuts? You know, this isn't here where, you know, if you protest, you're allowed to protest and you keep going. I know that people will be like, well, actually, bear with me here. Right? They're rounding up everybody. That's ridiculous. But once again, I don't know that for sure. That's not, that's unconfirmed, you know? Either way, fellas, I'm not here to talk about Russia, Ukraine. I'm here to talk about the context of space flights. So with that being said, Dimitri Rogozin did some other things today. Um, so here, this one. And fellas, I, I can't stress this enough. I never want to talk about politics on here ever ever it's so it's so toxic for chat i don't want to do it it's bad for people especially now because there's guys i'll be straight with you there's people that watch this stream in russia and there's people that watch the stream in ukraine and i feel so bad for all of them like and there's people in poland and hungary and a lot of there's a lot of people from eastern europe that watch this stream and finland and i feel bad for, like I, I feel i feel terrible that this is horrible you know i don't like i don't want to talk about this stuff that's such a big pain point with people but we have to it's important to understand the context of spaceflight. I don't like doing that. And I don't want you guys button heads about it either. We're all here for space. Remember that. Don't get hung up in the bullcrap cycle of outrage that the news is perpetuating right now. Guys, look. I, I watched Fox News for like six hours yesterday. Why the fuck would I want to watch television? Why would I want to watch 24-hour news on television? What do you think? I'm crazy? I'm crazy, but I'm not that type of crazy, okay? And then I watched six hours of CNN. I wanted to blow my brains out. But I needed to do that to examine context and understand what's going on. Oh, man, it was terrible. It was so bad, dude. I, I pity anyone that just goes to, like, Fox or CNN or anybody and just gets their news from a sole source. Those, you, they're going to make you crazy, you know? I don't watch news. I watch Twitter. Well, Ando, Twitter has some good news. And you, you generally, what I've noticed is that with the news cycles, Twitter generally goes faster. The information comes at you a lot faster than it would with a news network. Like I, guys, what, you want to know how much of a loser I am? I sat there and I was watching Fox News and I was watching Twitter. And I was timing in my head the time it takes the news that I see on Twitter to show up on the news. I, the specific thing that I, the specific event that I timed in kind of in my head, I didn't put an official time on it, but uh, like I, I didn't have a stopwatch out, but uh, when the president tweeted, the Ukrainian president Zelensky, when he tweeted about fake news and the time it took for that to get onto the news, it was probably about a half hour, 45 minutes. Yeah. Somewhere around there. It wasn't quick. So on Twitter, the news comes at you fast, but you got to remember it's not like the news anchor at the desk doesn't have their phone in front of them when they're not on camera scrolling through the news. The news and you know, the, the aggregate amount of time is them for at least to come up with some type of confirmation that it's actual news before they report it, which is funny because stuff still seeps through the cracks. I, I, I'm fairly confident I saw Arma 3 or DCS or something on Fox News or something the other day. I'm just like, okay, okay, okay. So I, I think that they're trying to vet information, trying, failing sometimes, but trying. 
Uh, that and that's the thing about Twitter. You don't mind. I don't like. It's not like getting your news from Twitter is bad. But once again, you're getting it from a sole source. That is very dangerous, and that's driving people up the wall. You can already see it happening on Twitter. How bloodthirsty people are about you screw Russia. I want to kill all the Russia. Are you freaking nuts? Like, this is war. Don't make hasty decisions in war. Really don't. Unless you want everybody to die in a nuclear fire. I mean, whatever. So, with that being said, you know, I couldn't help but laugh at that. Like, you've got to be careful, because the, the news on Twitter comes at you very quickly. And it's very hard to vet what's real and what's not. There were people posting footage from from Donbass in 2014 of rebels fighting, Ukrainian rebels fighting Russian, or Ukrainians fighting Russian rebels, right? Or call that whatever you want to call. They showed, they showed footage of fighting from 2014 and said, this is breaking news from the Donbass region or breaking news from Odessa or breaking news from Kiev. Like, and they were posting pictures of 2014. There is so much nonsense out there. There's so much fake crap out there. There's so much unconfirmed stuff that with Twitter, you got to be careful. And that's why, that's why I even bothered to put myself through the misery of freaking watching actual like 24 hour news networks, dude. It was, oh boy. Yeah, Baralicious, that's what I've been coming to figure out by listening to the Russian viewers that watch this stream. Uh, I just reached out and made sure they were okay. Dude, guys, I'll, I'll be honest, the, the vast majority of people that watch this stream from Russia and Belarus are scared out of their freaking minds. Like, scared, they're scared out of their minds too. Just like, just like everybody else, because, and you know what that tells me? That tells me that the people that watch this stream either, either have a brain or that's how a lot of the folks over there might think. Well, maybe. I don't know. I can't confirm that. But, you know, you got to remember that everybody watches this stream like space. We all like space. And, that you know, if you, you like space, you kind of have to have a brain to get into the nitty gritty stuff. You know what I'm saying? So whatever reaction that I'm getting from people in Russia and Belarus that watch this stream, they're scared, you know, I believe them. They're scared out of their freaking mind. So, once again, like I said, I didn't, I didn't mean to get on a soapbox, fellas. I don't, I really don't want to talk about this. I'm not even kidding. But I'm, what I'm not going to do is be scared, be scared to talk about it. Because it needs to be said. So, with that being said, when you're looking through for your space news or something, or you want to figure out what's going on in, other, in Russia and the Ukraine, make sure that you're vetting your sources. Don't just doom scroll through Twitter. You're going to go insane. Because people just posting stuff for fun... You know, people posting pictures like it's so it's so terrible. There's, there's people posting pictures of dead soldiers on both sides, and I'm like, what are you doing? Like, oh my god, have a little bit of class. Come on, man. Yeah, pretty much elfish. So, yeah, this is fine. Yeah, dude, we're going to hell in a handbasket, and we can't do anything about it, and that 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 sucks. <laughs> so. You know, this is what I'm doing, right? This is what I'm doing. Vet your sources. So, yeah, no, Astro, it's not really good. I didn't... <laughs> Last night when I was scrolling, I really didn't need to see somebody that got blown in half and set on fire. Like, I really didn't, I really didn't want to see that. I watched enough of that footage on Live Leak back in the day. Like, of, you know, insurgents getting blown apart. Like, didn't really need to see that, <laughs> you know? Hell in a bread basket. Yeah, right? <laughs> sure. Social media is a new front in modern warfare. It really is hellfish. It's kind of strange. I mean, it's it's interest like I'm not going to sit here and tell you that it's not interesting. It's very interesting and I'm I'm very interested in understanding what's going on, but I'm going to make sure that no one's going to skew my judgment about this in any way shape or form. You know? I think that Antares won't be a won't be an issue when the first stage in the engines we Russian. Yeah, Swishio. The, the core stage of Antares is made in the Ukraine by Yuzmash. <laughs> and, heck, I tried to look into that just in case anybody wanted to figure it out. Uh, Yuzmash and Yuznoye are the two plants that build parts for Antares. Uh, dude, I can't even confirm whether those plants are a crater or whether, still stand whether they're still standing. Heck, well, I don't even know if the AN-225 is still around. There were confirmed there there were confirmed reports that it was blown to pieces, 
and then it wasn't blown to pieces, and now it's blown to pieces again, and then it wasn't. And heck, even Antonov, the, the, the company that operates it, Volga Neifer, is they don't even know. Like... Yeah, there you go, Ida's. So, fellas, be careful with that, okay? And once again, I, I the reason why I wanted to say that and the reason why I wanted to give my piece here is because, uh, because I, from now on, with anything that pertains to space, especially po like politics and space overlapping, I'm just going to tell you what's going on. I'll tell you what I think after, but I'm going to report the news and... and I'm not going to lie to you. People ain't going to like it. People ain't going to like it, bros. You guys aren't going to like it. I know some of you won't. But look, man, the in a world that increasingly just wants to hit the blow each other up, blow each other up, blow each other up, kill him, kill him, kill him, kill him button. I'm not going with the lemmings. Screw that. I'm thinking for myself. I want, I want the truth. I don't give a frick about what your justification or anything like that. I... It's so ridiculously important, especially now, and I cannot stress that enough. Yeah, Squall, it's ridiculous. It, 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 I, Dude, I even see it over here. And don't get me wrong, there are a lot of Ukrainian Americans and there are a lot of Russian Americans that are really pissed off about this. And there are a lot of people that have hurt loved ones and stuff. And you know what? Family is the most important. And I get it, that stupid meme ruined that saying, but... Uh, it's ridiculous how fast, especially since the U.S. just pulled out of Afghanistan like a couple of months ago, after 20 years of of keeping the peace, whatever the frick that means, it it's insane to me how quickly people are beating the war drum again. It is ridiculous. That is... Are you freaking kidding me? Like, it's scary, man. I don't like it. I really don't. I'm not going to be a part of that. It's like Earthrise. They only saw the planet. Yeah, Astro. Well, look, man. I know from space flight that you don't make hasty decisions. Visceral reactions to things are how people die in space flight. And it seems like every day, visceral, I'm learning in my stupid perception of the world that visceral reactions just get people killed. And that's the end of that, especially when it comes to war. So I'm not, I'm not going to be a part of that crap. So... I'm going to stop talking. Well, not stop talking, but I'm going to, with, with, with my piece said, we're going in, okay? Put your gas masks on. <clears throat> so, Dimitri tweeted this today. Let's see what he's up to. In response to the sanctions from the European Union against our enterprises, Roscosmos is suspending cooperation with the European partners in organizing space launches from, Kur from the Kuru Cosmodrome and withdrawing its technical personnel, including the consolidated launch crew from French Guiana. So, it looks like they abandoned, the, the Russians pulled out of Kourou. So, that's good. Can we never talk about Rule 8 after this? Galaxy, the past, like I said, the past couple of days, dude, I've been really, it's, guys, what's been wearing on me isn't just all the, the war, you know, the war that's going on because the, there's an actual war and uh, my mind is having trouble my mind oh i was having trouble putting that together i get it now like still don't like it but i get it i always said that look there's gonna be <laughs> there's gonna be a day down the road where rule eight where politics and space programs collide happens sooner than i thought it would but here we are so I said if I'm going to do this, and if we're going to dive into Rule 8 stuff, two things. A, I'm only going to do this when we have to. And B, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it right. So, actually, I'm not going to sit here and say that we're never going to talk about Rule 8 stuff again, because I can't make that promise. We're not going to turn into a political, this isn't going to turn into a political pundit stream. Let me put it to you like that. The only thing I'm a pundit for is the space program. And peaceful, peaceful space program. That's it. That's my axe to grind. I will tell you straight up. I am extremely biased towards launching more things into space and expanding humanity's dexterity among the solar system. That is the stated axe to grind on this stream. And 
if in case you're from overseas uh, and axe to grind doesn't really make any sense, that's my agenda. I'm not even kidding. That's straight up. I will. What other what other person that reports any current events will tell you that? My only stated goal is to get people involved with space and on board with space and get humanity off this rock, not permanently. That's my stated goal. That's it. Nothing else. You have my word on that. I swear on my mom. Hi, mom. Love you. That's right, Lego. Indeed. So the big space news is that, you know, Dmitry Rogozin didn't, he doesn't want to end the ISS partnership, which honestly, I didn't expect that from him. I expected him to be like, piss off, screw you. I hate you. I'm going to blow up the ISS. That's what I was expecting. That's not what he said. He did not say that. The second part is because of the EU sanctioning Roscosmos, uh, we saw a launch site in Europe get abandoned. That's the big news right now. Now, the U.S. hasn't released their sanctioning package towards uh, towards Russia, and if it includes, you know, when they do, I'm going to have to go and read it. I'm going to have to go and read it. I don't really want to, but I'm going to have to. And when I do, if there's anything with space, I'll let you know. Mom, mom, mama. Mom, 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 mama. Oh yeah, Bram. I'm not. I'm not gonna be like the popular Twitch streamers out there with their hot takes every five minutes on, and their expert analysis on every single freaking current event, dude. The truth behind this is that you know why is the Russian invading Ukraine? I don't know. There are stated justifications, but. Mm, the justifications seem to be a little bit flimsy, so that suggests ulterior motives. But what that... I don't know. Do I even know if it's an ulterior motive? No. I have no idea. And I ain't going to give you a hot take. I ain't going to weigh in on it. I don't know. Unless unless I could get an interview with the president of Russia right now or the, the president of the United States, which probably isn't happening. I don't know. And even if I did, they wouldn't tell me. You know? So... Don't forget Kuru. Yep. So what are the paths forward options for the ISS? Keeping Soyuz flying? Um, the problem is... Just with the rise at the end for a long time. You can imagine Constellation, but like 10x worse. I mean, Bauxi, I can't sit here and tell you that anything good is going to come of this with when it comes to space. And if something does, it's probably not going to be realized right away. You know what I mean? Discovery, go at throttle up. Exactly. Well, Remo, did you did you read what he said? Interesting way to put it. A uh, little weird, but all right. Like, like I said, fellas, I'm not trying to be a shill for the Russian Federation or any crap like that. I I went and read what Putin's speech was about. I went and read, and you know what? It made me it made me feel a little bit better because it shows that the guy isn't completely freaking unhinged. Like. And, you know, what's funny is that's what we saw on Fox News, Brimo. We saw that on Fox. We saw that on CNN. Putin's crazy. He's out of his freaking mind. Blah, blah. It's like, no. No. A guy wouldn't write, like, a 5,000-word speech on justification for invading another country if he was unhinged. And even then, if he did, it would be, it would be a useless rant about stuff. Like what Mustache Man did in, in 1939. It's just a useless rant about it how we hate you and stuff like that. That's not what that speech was. It, it, it wasn't that. It, it showed it showed premeditation and coordination. So once again, it's kind of reassuring because, you know, that guy's in control of like 6,000 nukes or something. So that made me feel a little bit better. I'm not going to lie to you. But once again, I ain't saying that I agree with him. Hell no. I think you're freaking nuts. But once again, it's important to understand context. Yeah, cooking, just because you understand doesn't mean you agree, right? That's a real important thing to, that's a real important thing to grasp. I read his speech. I understand what he's, I understand what you're saying. I get it. I don't agree with you. I, I really don't agree with you, but I understand, you know, with all due respect, agree to disagree. That's fine. That's totally okay, guys. That's my take on it, dude. And if people disagree with me, that's totally cool. 
I I take the time to understand. And not I'm not saying that anybody here doesn't do anything different. Everyone's going to have a different perspective on something. I'm not going to get mad that people are disagreeing with me. It's just, yeah, I, that was my interpretation of it. And it seems like Dimitri is saying something very similar, just kind of play it cool. But I, I mean, I still don't agree. I don't agree with what he's doing. I think I think you're out of your freaking mind, to be honest, you know? One web is definitely going to suffer. Yep, yep. I mean, you you can really tell, and it really comes through, that he, he is not happy that the Soviet Union broke up, uh, I think. I think, he, well, it's not so much that he's not happy about it. it it's it's annoying that he they didn't have any say in how it broke up. That's That was his justification in the speech, which is just, all right. I mean, you did, though. Who is OneWeb? OneWeb is, an, is a UK and Indian company that manufactures internet satellites in the US and they launch on Soyuz rockets. So yeah, OneWeb's pretty screwed. You know, Imperator, I think that's his justification that, you know, I, you know, Russians didn't really have a say in how Russia got cut up. What that, That's what he was trying to say. I mean, it, it was at least it was at least coherent. Let me let me let me say that. And once again, fellas, I ain't trying to give the freaking guy credit. I think he's out of his mind. But it it was a coherent argument. I I get it. I don't agree with it, but I get it. You know. It seems like he's missing the family that. It seems like he's missing the family that he caused not to talk. I don't know, dude. Yeah, Kaz, it's a very interesting thing. And you know what? Honestly, it's it kind of compelled me to want to learn more. I want to learn more. Like, what? I mean, if he's pissed off about how the Soviet Union collapsed and how it was broken up, I mean, dude, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that I don't see that. It economically screwed that country for three decades, like, badly. Like, it's pretty obvious to see that. I, I'm more curious as, as to why. Like, what happened here? I don't know enough, you know? Hey, Nazalik, what's going on? Vox has great has a great video on its history. Honestly, Imperator, if I'm really getting down to brass tacks, I'm not interested in videos. They will be taken into account. But with a produced video from Vox about this, and I'm not saying that Vox is good. I'm not saying that Vox is bad. Vox is just another secondary source that you can gather and compile to your data set. I, I like going to primary sources when it comes to this. Um, Vox is a secondary source, and that's okay. Secondary sources can be cited, but after vetting. Th this is writing an essay 101, guys. Did You guys learned this, right, in school? Whatever your reasons are, war is never a good option. Yeah, Thrawn, you'll you you'll get no argument from me, guys. I've been ad I've been very, very anti-war, and I've been anti-war for a long time. Why do you think I don't make weapons in KSP? Even though we could. I know how to. I'm not going to. I tried it once and I hated myself for it. Hi. Hello, sir. Uh, this is the hyperfocus police. We just want to make sure that we're still sticking to space politics. And not veering too far into the realm of political opinion, and so I just wanted to come in and do that. Okay, thank you. Okay. Oh no, it's the cops. The firework launcher. Yep, yep. <laughs> so, the fellas, once again, I hate weighing in on pol political stuff. I hate doing it, but I'm gonna learn. I'm I'm gonna get down to the truth because that's that's important. So, I think we covered... With that being said, I think we've covered everything that needs to be covered when it comes to that. Um, Crikey, it's the Roses! <laughs> uh, geek, I just went through it, um, like, in the past 30 minutes. So, yeah, if you want to go back in the bottom, I don't really want to repeat myself, man. Usually I'm all for it, and usually I don't mind repeating myself 30 to 40 times. It's fine. It's okay. It helps me get the me it helps me gets the point. It, it helps me get the point across. But yeah, I don't want to talk about this anymore, man. No, I know you just got here, dude. It's all good. 
there was a poll on CNN and 77% said we should go to war. They don't understand. Well, cooking, can you link that poll for me? I'd be interested. If you guys want to see how I cut through information, I wouldn't mind showing you what I do. Now we can relieve some stress by rotating the camera around the SPH for the next three hours. Thanks. Thanks, Jim. The next two Northrop Grumman's are already scheduled to use significant Delta V margins to boost the ISS. Yep, okay. Yeah, Papa Bear. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It was about NATO going to war. Very different wording. Can somebody link me to said poll? What's the, so, okay, guys. All right. Let, if you want to look at it, poll. Polls are used all the time. The the 24-hour news networks love love polls. They really, really like them. They love polls to because they like telling you a slant to a story. Okay. 60% oh, of people like going number one, 20% of people like going number two, you know, and 20% of other people like going, you know, number one and number two at the same time. Okay, what's your sample set? What's your data set? Did you oversample or undersample? Like, who did you talk to about this? How many people did you talk to about this? How many people here out of that group like going to the bathroom? How many people don't like going to the bathroom? You know what I mean? Like, Sorry, I don't mean to use a poop joke. I'm trying to keep the humor, keep keep the humor going. But you get the idea. Polls feed seed airtime. Yep. Polls are not, I'm not gonna say that they're not accurate and I'm not gonna say that they don't reflect, you know, certain certain things. It's just really dependent on your data, your data set. What data, what data are you sampling? So, for instance, and also timing on a poll is very, 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 very important, okay? So what do I mean by that? If I'm playing Kerbal, okay, if I'm playing KSP, and we're in the middle of a K we're in the middle of KSP, okay, and I say, do you know, do you guys like Kerbal Space Program? And I just put a poll out in Twitch chat, what is it going to say? Yeah, of course, it's going to be overwhelmingly in favor of KSP. Now, if I did the same thing when we were playing, oh, I don't know, Summer Car, do you think the poll would give, get the same result? No, it wouldn't. It would be skewed because there is people here that are here to watch Summer Car. And they're, they're, don't get me wrong, there are viewers that watch me no matter what, right? And I, I appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. Thank you for bearing with me over these past couple of months when I've, you know, kind of just been playing other games. I really appreciate it. Uh, but you're going to get a skewed poll. So it, it, it's not just about data sets and what people think or not. Well, no, it is about the data set. It's not just about what people think and, you know, what's your opinion on this? Opinions can change. They can change all the time. When did you sample this? Why did you sample it? Who did you talk to? What was your, are you oversampling? Or are you undersampling? There's a lot, there's a lot to do with polls. You've got to be very careful. Like guys, I've seen it so bad that on the news, like, I think I saw a poll one time around election time in 2020 that said, you know, you know, one guy is way heavily favored over the other one. But if you go and look at the results, you know, minus electoral votes, you know, it's it wasn't necessarily what's going on. Electoral, the electoral college is there for a reason to prevent majority mob rule. And I, I find that that's really it's a really good idea. Um, but I looked at this poll, right? And it was heavily skewed to one candidate or another, you know, it was heavily skewed. They oversampled, you know, they oversampled people that didn't like the incumbent over people that did like the incumbent. That that's, that's, that's junk data. That's, that's not being scientific. Why is that not being scientific? Because when you're being scientific about something, you don't you don't look for something to confirm your data. You look for something to disprove your data. That's what being scientific is about. That's how the scientific method works. You're not trying to prove, you're not trying to prove it outright. You don't look, you don't search for information that confirms your hypothesis, all right? You, you, you don't do that. You, you, do, you don't find stuff that fits what you're, the hypothesis that you're trying to make. You try to disprove it. That's what, and once again, these polls are, skewed they're skewed hard in one direction or another so and, and everyone does this to be honest every everyone everyone does this it, it, like it's kind of nuts and it's really hard to keep track of 
Out of eight turkeys and two ducks, 80% are against Thanksgiving. Exactly, Geese, and there you go. I mainly watch you for space news. Yep, yep. I'm here to hear you scream about everything. Ah, ribs, spare ribs. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Now, Lexi, if I'm not going to sit here and say that polls are not accurate. Of course they're accurate. Duh. If you ask five people whether they like EJ or not, and four of them say, you know, oh, I hate his guts, like, that does, does that mean that that's inaccurate? No, it's not inaccurate. But what's the point that you're trying to make? That I'm a piece of crap? Like, I mean, you might be right. I don't know. <laughs> you might be, maybe, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> like, I mean, that, it, there's a theory, there's a possibility that I, you know. But, yeah, I mean, you got to be careful with polls. Could, now, with that being said, did anybody link that poll? I'd, I'd be curious. Not having much like finding the poll. Oh, uh, it, was on, it was on Hassan's stream. Okay, okay, cool. People can lie because they think their answer... Yeah, exactly. People could be afraid to speak out. Happens all the time. All you got to do is look at history. Like, do you think there were people in the Soviet Union when Stalin was alive that didn't like him? Oh, yeah. Would they have said anything about it? No. <laughs> no, unless you feel like dying today. You know, like, don't get me wrong. It's a little more complicated than that. But that's, that's a little bit of hyperbole on my part to get the point across. Have you figured your KSP mission mode? No, Scientic, not yet. I reject any poll that doesn't have a cowboy, cowboy, that doesn't have a cowboy kneel option. Good man. I'm here for the guitar riffs. Good man. Papa Bear, even even 538 at times has skewed, has oversampled one way or the other. But over, see, that's the thing about stat. Oversampling, it happens. Sometimes that happens when you're trying to get a blind study of a data set. You don't tell everybody that you're going to release a poll about something, right? You just send out the information double blind, and when it comes back to you, you figure out if it's oversampled or not. That's what stats all about. 538 is an aggregate too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cooking. Hassan's point was showing the poll was to say how stupid people are not understanding why NATO just doesn't attack. Yeah, it doesn't exist something to do with why. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's right. Cooking, he's correct. He's correct. Like, that's right. You don't... Yeah, that, and that, dude, I said that too. I, it's kind of alarming how everyone wants to beat that war drum right now, especially with Afghanistan so fresh in our minds. What the hell are we doing? Are you crazy? Like, and that's what was scaring me the past couple of days, dude. I, I've, dude, I've been... I'm good now, don't get me wrong. I kind of came to terms with what's going on, you know? But I, dude, I let fear kind of guide my actions there for a second because, dude, I was, I'm scared out of my mind. You kidding me? Repost. I read about that CNN poll on Twitter, but here's a screenshot of it. So here's the thing, fellas. And once again, I'm not trying to dunk on CNN. Everyone does that. Should NATO go to war for the Ukraine with 36,691 votes? Okay, who did you ask? Did you ask 36,000 Ukrainians? Vote at smirk, smirkinish.com, okay? 77% yes, 23% no. Results of the smirkinish.com survey. <laughs> who did you sample? Like, who did you ask? Is it just a blind sample? Like, is this just a... Here, look. What is this website? I don't know this website. Do you think that one web will go to Aryan space? They can move it around, Swishio, if they have to. It's a radio host, okay? That's not right. NATO, within its own rules, is not allowed to attack. Yeah, Reshock. So once again, the 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 base the base question of this poll is skewed to begin with, and that's what I mean about Dunning Kruger. People don't understand that NATO is a defensive organization. Now that. I mean, the president of Russia will disagree with you on that one, but you, they can't. It's not in their charter to attack. It's in their charter to defend. That's right. You're absolutely right. So that question is bupkis to begin with. That question's stupid. It, it's irrelevant. They can't. 
And if they do, well, damn them, they'd be wrong. See what I mean, guys? You gotta be careful with this stuff. Be very careful, use your brain. Don't go from zero to 11. I'm telling you, don't do that. Because look, who did they talk to? Where did this vote come from? What was your sample size? What country is everybody from? What if this was, you know, I, I guaranteed if you asked this question in Russia, you'd get a different, you'd get a very different result. It would probably still be, you know, it would, st I don't know. I can't say if it, whether it would still be or not, but you'd get a different result than if you asked that in the United States or you asked that in Poland or if you asked that in Estonia or Finland. What is your data set here? Check the website in that pic. Okay, let's go here. Okay. I, there's nothing about it here. You don't like NATO. Well, Monblin, that's, I'll be honest with you, man. That's the kind of stuff I say don't do. Great, you don't like NATO, that's fine. We're not talking about whether we like NATO or not. Don't change the subject. And more importantly, you're weighing in with an opinion. You know good and well there's people that are gonna disagree with you about that. Now, I'm not saying I disagree or don't disagree. But what, is that, what does that do? What is weighing in on it saying you don't like NATO, my country's better than you? What is that gonna do in a time of war? Is that gonna help anything? No, no, man, don't do that, stop, please. Don't, don't, don't go to 11 like that, trust me, don't do it, it's not a good idea. Now, I'm not saying you can't speak your opinion either, but you gotta be careful, man, you don't wanna put fuel on the fire, this can get out of hand real quick, man. Don't do it. Yeah. I guess, John, I mean, once again, fellas, I, I'm, I'm saying, <laughs> saying we got to go to sources and opinion is opinion and that's fine. But I'm, I'm, you got you to you remember, we're talking about polls here. I got to keep us on an even track, especially if we're in a minefield like this. You know what I'm saying? It's a proverbial minefield. Actual minefields don't seem like a lot of fun. I I don't I don't know what this site is. I don't know what Smirconish is. I don't know where this poll where this poll is, where it's sampled from. Like I'd have to go look. But see what I mean, dude? It's dangerous, man. It's no good. I like NASA's tweet that put things in perspective. Sure, sure. What's up, Maggie? What's on your mind? Smirkinish is a B team weekend anchor on CNN that does online polls daily. Okay. Yeah, Brian, I'm going against the grain on this one, man. I'm sorry. Like, I'm not doing that. I'm not. I'm not going along with everybody else. This is nuts. This is, this, this is, dude, uh, I, please excuse me for being so candid during this space. This is fucking crazy. What are we doing? Like, it's him put that poll on the airwaves. It's irresponsible. I agree. And I think Hassan is very smart for pointing that out, Cooking. If you really want my honest opinion, I don't agree with everything that he says. I agree with some things that he said. I very much agree with him on this. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. freaking lutely You are freaking nuts if we, like, that, that that's crazy. But you got to remember, because this poll's, this poll's data set might not reflect reality because we don't know the sample information. You don't know it. You don't know it. Hey, Entropy, I'm not here to make, to piss anybody off, all right? I'm not here to attack people. That's stupid. I hate people that point the finger at other people. I hate people that blame people for their problems. I really don't like that, okay? That, that is... You, you saw how pissed off I got when Bill threw Jim under the bus in that press interview. That really made me mad. It's a Twitter poll, basically. So, yeah, you don't know your data set, Maggie. You could have had multiple multiple votes. It, it's, it's, it's fake. Like, I think, once again, I think that Hassan is right for saying that this is wrong. He's absolutely correct. But what's this data set based off of? It's skewed. It's absolutely skewed. There's no way that it's not. And until I see the source information, I'm not going to think otherwise. 
So that means that this pole is very dangerous like other poles out there because it's designed to get you, it's designed to, to make you think something. Oh, well, a lot of people want to go to war. Okay, maybe I want to too. You know, like, okay, maybe that's the right decision. That's very dangerous. That is a, that is a very dangerous thing. You're putting out unconfirmed, unconfirmed, potentially skewed data and reporting it as news. That's not good. But also, it's important to take into account that that poll might not reflect reality. I'm fairly confident that the vast majority of people on this planet do not want to fight each other. Am I wrong in assuming that? It is an assumption, and you gotta be careful with assumptions. However, I'm pretty sure we all don't wanna fight each other. I don't wanna fight anybody. I think that's counterintuitive as hell. Oh, Josh, it's not just us. Everyone does it, dude. It's annoying, and it's very, it really, it really, it really jars on you, which is why I don't watch, which is why I don't watch them. You know what I mean? I want to fight for my right to party. Hell yeah. No sleep till Brooklyn, baby. Yeah, Vola, that's what I mean, dude. That poll is, that poll is stupid. And this is the part where I disagree. I don't think, so... The reaction that you're supposed to have to this, okay? And this is what I mean about presenting news and presenting opinion in an op-ed as news. That's very dangerous. What's the reaction that you're supposed to have to this? What is the natural human response to this? The natural human response to this is, oh my God, people are freaking crazy. But you don't know that. That's not true. And until you see a data set, it doesn't freaking matter. That poll, I would disregard this poll. It doesn't, I'm sorry, there's no concrete. What, who did you sample? It's, a, it's an internet poll, so people could have voted 80,000 times. Somebody could have made a bot to just keep hitting the, the yes button. In fact, that's probably what happened. You, you see, you gotta, gotta use your brain a little bit. And sometimes that means drawing connections that you might not be able to, to, to prove. But like I said, the overwhelming response from people, I see it in this chat. I see it from pretty much anywhere around the world. I know where you guys are from. Like, I'm not trying to say like, oh, I know where you live. Like, you guys talk to me, I know you. I know where people are from. I, I want to get to know you because it helps makes me a better teacher, not for any other particular reason. And no, I don't write this down. It's all up here because you should know who you're talking to, right? When you teach, it's, that's part of the educational facet of this, right? Uh, the vast response is that this is a stupid idea. I'm stalking you, Lig. Yep, yep. Yeah, of course, Geek. That's fine. I'm not interested in ratings. And my view count's probably tanking that I'm even talking about this. I don't care. It needs to be said. I don't give a frick if it affects me financially. I really don't care. It's too. The truth is too important. The truth and keeping a cool head is way too important, especially right now. Yeah, because, dude, it's scary. There's no use driving people up into a frenzy for no reason, okay? Especially if people are seeing stuff like this. All this is going to do is make someone's day worse. Why do you think people stop watching the news? Why do you think people feel so alienated about watching any type of news at all? Or why do you think people detox from social media? That's the reason, right there. The poll could have a biased sample. But basing your view on anecdotal evidence as a people's opinion is also biased. Bingo. You got it, Switch. Exactly. There's no way, there's not a chance in hell that that poll reflects reality. There's not a chance in hell. And that's what I mean about the news. You've got to be careful. Because the news gets you to, they, they, try to, they try to make you outraged into, keep wa into, into, into watching over and over again like a soap opera. It, it's not good. That's super dangerous. And I really have a problem with it. And you know what? I'm not saying that one person is good over another. Everyone freaking does this. It's, it's aggravating as hell. Check the bottom part about poll numbers. Okay. All right. What's this article about? Let me see.
Interesting. An APNORC poll conducted last Friday through this Monday said that 26% of Americans believe the U.S. should play a major role in the situation between Russia and the Ukraine. Bingo. That's probably more accurate to reality than this crock of crap. Ugh, get the f off the screen. Uh, Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, if... See, they, they're they reporting that, but where's your source? Where's your source? You know, an APNORC poll. Okay, give me the link to the poll, please. I would like to I would like to examine the data results myself, but they don't. There's no, there's no link to that. Where can I find this poll? Where can I find these numbers? And what were they based off of? See what I mean? Yeah, exactly, Santic. You gotta be this you gotta be so freaking careful with this stuff, man. But anyway. Here's the AP link to the poll itself. Let me see. I didn't look into that poll as my bullcrap sense was tingling. Maybe I was wrong. But at any rate, the question is nonsensical. Floating, I, yeah, if you think that, that's fine. I, I'm not interjecting my opinion into stuff that I do not know about. I will not give you a hot take on this. I'm interested in the data, and that's it. I'm reading the article real quick. Here, let, uh, yeah, I'll just do it with you guys. I don't care. Just see it on stream. We're already here. Most Americans are paying at least some attention to the increased tensions between Russia and Ukraine. While most of the public thinks the United States should have a role in the situation, there are more likely there are they are more likely to say it should be a minor role rather than a major role. <laughs> That's good. But foreign ten Americans have ruined the way the President Joe Biden is handling the phone of foreign ten Americans. 53% are concerned that Russia's influence around the world poses a threat to the United States. Because, of course, uh, only about a quarter have a great deal of confidence in the U.S. government's intelligence agencies. 46% have heard or read a lot about the military buildup in the Ukrainian border, and 29% have heard or read some. People who have been paying at least some attention to the situation in the Ukraine are more inclined to support a role for the United States. 32% say it should be a major role. 51% said it should be a minor role. Among, 20, among the 24 who are paying little to no attention to the tensions between Russia and the Ukraine, 34% of the United States should not play a role in the situation in Ukraine. Most people on either side of the aisle agree that the United States should not only take a minor role in the situation in Eastern Europe, yet Democrats are slightly more likely than Republicans to think the United States should take a major role. Okay, where's your sample set? Where's your data set? Who did you talk to about this? Uh, guys, I'm disregarding this information if they don't give me a sample set. I'm sorry. Any Anything here. This is a, give, give me your sample size. Did I miss it? I may have missed it. They state the data set at the top of the page. The survey was conducted by the APNRC Center for Public Affairs with funding, all right, whatever. Interviews for the survey were conducted between February 18th and 21st. Febu between February 18th and 21st, before the war even started. Great. Nice. God. See what I mean? You conducted this before Russia, in fact, invaded the Ukraine. If you told me on the 21st that Russia was going to invade the Ukraine, I would have called you crazy. See what I mean? 
Got to be careful with this stuff, man. You have to do the digging. You have to, especially if you think you want to weigh in on it. That's very important. Okay. With adults, age 18, age 18 and over. <sighs> with adults age 18 and over representing the 50 states in the dis over representing the 50 states in the District of Columbia, panel members were randomly drawn from Amerispeak, and 1,289 people completed the survey. 1,224 via the web and 65 via telepo telephone. Panel members were invited by email or phone from an NRC telephone interview, and interviews were conducted in both English and Spanish, depending on the respond respondent preference. Respondents were offered a small monetary incentive for completing the survey. All right. Final stage completion rate is 15.5%. The weighted household panel response is 17.1%, and the weighted household panel retention rate is 75.6% for a cumulative response rate of 2%. The overall margin of sampling error is plus or minus 3.6 percentage points at the 95% confidence level, including the design effect. The margin sampling error may be higher for subgroups. Okay. Black respondents were sampled at a higher rate than their proportion of the population for reasons of analysis. Okay. The overall margin for sampling error for the 301 completed interviews is seven plus or minus 7.2 percent. If you're oversampling a demographic for analysis, why are you using that to prove a different thing? You're oversampling one demographic over another for analytical purposes. If you're doing it for that, why would you not why are you like the combination hypothesis doesn't make any sense to me you're polling polling are supposed to prove a result if you oversample one over another for anal for analysis purposes that that means you're trying to you're you're oversampling so it doesn't reflect reality in any way shape or form unless i'm thinking about stat wrong fellas Statistics are both a wonderful tool and horrible tool. See last. More importantly, the monetary reward for voting yes. I don't think there were people were compensated for their time firework. They were paid to complete the poll. That's all. That's all that says. The monetary thing doesn't play an effort here. If they said, you know, if they said we'll pay you for voting a certain way, then I'd be concerned. No, no, not monetary incentive for voting. That doesn't make any. No, <laughs> that's not what's going on, dude. You gotta, you gotta take a stat course, man. That's not, that's not what's happening here. You, Ginny, I'm looking for your last. The poll doesn't matter, not because of sample size, but because, not because of who was polled, but because the average person anywhere does not have all the knowledge needed to decide if the war with anyone is ever appropriate. That is why we have governments and leaders, intelligence committees. That's what I mean. Yeah, that's part of what I'm trying to say. You gotta be careful with this stuff. I don't think any of us are qualified on this unless you're a stat major. I'm pretty good at stat, Papa Bear. Yeah, I'm I'm pr I'm pretty good. At, I'm pretty good at stat. Yeah, pretty damn good at it, actually. It's voluntary, so it's subjective by design. Yeah, I I don't. I'll I'll admit I don't understand oversampling for perp for reasons of analysis. Why would you? If you're trying to get an analysis on what public opinion is on this unsaid subject, why would you oversample one demographic over another? I'm not sure what those research purposes or reasons of analysis were. Do they go on explaining that? I'm, I'm looking through. No, of course they don't. <sighs> See what I mean? Got to be careful with this stuff, man. And that's just one poll. Don't, don't, don't buy into it, man. This is all designed to get you to think a certain way. And I don't do that here. I don't care what you guys think. As long as you thought it up, you know, I'm not designed to, uh, this stream isn't designed to teach you how to, uh, uh, what to think. It's designed to teach you how to think. That's my whole thing. That's what, that's what being an engineer in space flight is all about. You gotta be able to use your brain, man. 
Yeah, Pacey, I know. Stat courses are not fun. Yeah. For, for, yeah. for the record, the news isn't some shadowy villain put it on puppet strings. Oh, no, Herbors. Absolutely not. It's an easy target for blame. And you know what I said about pointing the finger? That's correct. But it's just a dark mirror of public consciousness. The whole thing is just a bunch of sleep to fly and stuffed out over caffeinated people scrambling to find something that people respond to. It's just throwing spaghetti at the wall and trying to find... <laughs> yep. So you count. It's like streaming, dude. I get it. Nah, man. Uh, I, I totally... Uh, I understand. Missed a tip before. Sorry, I was... I, uh, the really... I, it's very important to illustrate this point. Test the rules. Your handling of this discussing important topic and doing it without spin. Happy to see that. Absolutely, man. I will. I can't. I, I won't do it. I couldn't. I couldn't do it. It would weigh too hard on my conscience. The only, <laughs> the only thing that doesn't weigh on my conscience is getting more people to like space. And once again, most people aren't really forward about their agenda. That's my agenda. I want you to like space more, <laughs> and I'm gonna get you to do it. <laughs> but anyway, Tesla. Thank. Thanks, man. It's important, especially now, to not jump to conclusions, not point fingers, analyze the data, come to your own opinion, please. Mission accomplished. I love space. Yes. Yes. We'll show us some space. That would be my pleasure. And once again, guys, I don't like doing this on stream. I'm doing it because my hand's forced. We have to. I it's a, it, I have to address it. I hate that I have to address it, and I'm never doing I I'm never doing it until it has till we have to again. With that being said, want to go see what's going on in Boca Chica? I'm interested to see what Fords and what porta potties are driving I mean Chevys are driving around Boca Chica today. Let's go. Space brews. What is that, Jim? What is this? What is this and where can I get it? Forta potties? You shut your mouth. Back to no politics. Yes, drummer, that's fine. Uncapping, uh, I'm going to read what you said, but I really want to change the subject. Yeah, that's uncapping. I, I think I think you're kind of in the ballpark there. Absolutely. Uh, but that's in the past, man. All we can do is learn from the past and make sure we don't repeat. But that seems to... <laughs> It seems like that's getting harder and harder every day. <sighs> okay, we're back to no politics, guys. And hopefully this is the last time for a while. But if there's any other news out there that has where politics and space flight collide, you're, we're, we're going to have to do it again. And I don't want to, but to say that this would be the last of what's going on with you know, the Russian space program, the American space program, the Chinese space program would be very foolish. Uh, you know, if it, if it rears its ugly head again, I'm going to do it. And I know good and well what <laughs> that people don't want to sit here. You get enough of that during the day. Believe me, I know. Um, but yeah, when we have to, we have to. Truth is more important. Truth in context and critical thinking is the most important thing that we have. It's, it is a, it's the reason why we're not a bunch of chimpanzees running around all over the place throwing poop at each other, okay? <laughs> the fact that we can use critical thinking and we don't rely on limbic function to govern our lives like a pig or a dog or anything else is very important. You have that tool up here. Please use it. Anyway, Starship stuff. Let's go. You don't like throwing poop around? I mean... No. No. Yeah, no, Rest Shock. I, I really don't, actually. Um, no. <laughs> you know, I thought about it. No, no, I don't. Yeah. Yeah, you know what? I thought about it. No, no, no. Yeah, I saw the parade. Tomas, that's really cool. Lots of respect for jumping into all of this. It was good to hear. Yeah, no problem, man. And don't get me wrong. I I know full and well the repercussions that I just had. I I know. I'm sorry. I'm sure somebody looked at this and said, "Well, not watching this guy anymore," and that's fine. That's okay. It's, it's 
it is what it is, man. You know, we'll get those viewers back someday. Probably not the same viewers, but... Do we get a prize if we find the minty truck? No, not a prize, but... Okay, I mean, maybe I'll give you some EJ points. But, see, the thing is, is that EJ points are hyperinflated. I gave them out. Like, I, I just gave you a million EJ points, dude. A million. Mint! <laughs> That's awesome, Map State. Your calls to reason are intolerable. <laughs> no, John, Jesus, no. Man, don't I already get sidetracked enough? You guys are dragging me in all directions all the time at every waking moment. I don't need channel points making that worse. Please, I'll go bananas. Please don't make me do that. <laughs> Casey, I recently adopted a dog from a blacksmith. When I got the dog home, it immediately, it immediately made a bolt for the door. Oops. John, why is it where you always suggest something and I say, no, I don't want to, and you immediately go, oh, well, you know, you should. I, I just told you no. Like, I don't, I don't know how to make that, I don't know how to make that any clearer. Like, no, no, I'm not doing that. Have a good day. Have a nice day. Hard to get rid of you, Bran, but I gave you one billion Bran points. Bran points? Oh hell yeah. You're a good dude. Thanks, Absolute. Appreciate it. Flyboy, 19 month resub. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> I know you just said no, but have you considered saying yes instead? Oh, man, maybe. No. <laughs> yeah, those guys are playing Minecraft. Look at that. Look at those stone bricks. Those are cinder blocks. What's the conversion rate for EJ points to shroot bucks? Oh, I don't know. Oh, nice, Mason. Yeah, yeah. Hypo inflated. Nice, nice, nice. Looks like stone bricks to you. Firework, they're cinder blocks, dude. <laughs> Those are cinder blocks, man. Yeah, there might be a creeper up there. I don't, right click, save as hand. Yes, yeah, stonemason work, Badger, is pretty zen, absolutely. Yeah, actually, yeah, it's pretty awesome. Think of how many bookcases you can make with all those blocks, right? Oh, uh, yeah, there's the motors right there. EJ points to Dogecoin, about 350. Like I said, fellas, look around for the scaffolding. The less scaffolding you see means we're closer to being ready to go. Interesting. I wonder what those wires are going up the side, dude. Yeah, yeah, yes, Trippy. Redeemable at said Loch Ness Monster. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You guys know. Why are you asking me? You knew already. Shh, John, shh, quiet. Shh, shh, shh. That's a new quick disconnect. Interesting. Something tells me that that trailer is second. In second place at every corner. Um, I don't know, I don't know why. It's just, just a hunch that I have. Oh, 
Those are going to a piston which pushes something into an HBU pack. Interesting, okay. Alright, alright. I mean, it is a trailer. It's technically being pulled, so it is second. So, you're te so that trailer is technically second in every corner. Alright? Congratulations. You don't know how to market correctly, trailer. Wake up, sheeple. Wait, what? More crane parts delivered. So that looks like a main boom and a derrick. This top piece is the is the derrick from what I can tell here, and then your main boom is right there. Uh, this suggests that the Lieber 11,000 is getting rebuilt. Uh, the one that this there's two Lieber 11,000 cranes. They're big crawler cranes that have that have gigantic gigantic booms on them. They got huge tracks of land. Um, this says that they're gonna they're gonna change the configuration on the crane. The cranes are configurable like Lego kits. So actually, it's more like Meccano. It's a giant Meccano set. Um, and you can configure the crane depending on the type of lift that you need. And these are, this is all the paraphernalia that you need to build the crane. Enjoying a treat, Derek! Something tells me it's refrigerated liquid. No, no, <laughs> Come on. The quick disconnect thing. What's Zach got for us? Huh. Alright. Is that good or what, dude? Thomas, you a good dude. Crane bits. What is this thing? Also, look at the wide bay in the top right of the screen. It's definitely going into the clouds, just saying. I want to know, do pineapples go on pizza? If you want them to go on pizza, they can go on pizza clutch. But also... If you're going to put pineapples on pizza, be prepared for people to judge the frick out of you. If you're fine with people thinking you're a terrible person, then do it. It's really up to you. Personally, me, I don't care. I don't care. Pizza is the sandbox game of foods. Now, don't put sand on your pizza. I mean, you, you could. Don't do that. I mean, well, I'm not saying you could. I mean, like, you could if you want to, but you can put anything on pizza, dude. Pizza's delicious anyway. You're missing the point. You could put... You could put sand on there. You could make some concrete on your pizza if you want. Put, you know, people put dead fish on there all the time. Like, I don't know. You put whatever you want. You're missing a point. It's pizza. You can do whatever you want with it. You could put penicillin on your pizza. Da, da, da. That's a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles reference. This looks like a, um, a mandrel here, fellas. To be honest, if you look, the steel plates are up there. It looks like they're bending steel over a mandrel. I'm not sure why, though. Chewing gum pizza? I'm sure someone will appreciate that somewhere, Kiranov. Yeah, Thomas, that's a little weird. I put living fish on my pizza? Okay, that's a little strange. Pod bay doors? You think so, Jim? So this looks like... This jig right here looks like something that you bend the stainless steel over. I know because there's bent stainless steel over it. Now, what SpaceX is using that for, I don't know. I, I'm not really 100% sure what I'm looking at here. It could be a welding jig. It could be a piece to a welding jig. But, yeah, I, I'm not sure. What if you put pizza on pizza? Well, Batman, that's called a calzone. Just saying. Yeah, that's true, Chris. Yeah, maybe. 
I made you a pizza. Uh, I just had pizza for lunch, actually, so I'm good, man. I'm just kidding. You can eat pizza anytime. You know, I think Aristotle said, pizza in the morning, pizza in the evening, pizza at supper time. When pizza's on a bagel, you can eat it anytime. Yeah. There's Aristotle. Aristotle versus Mashy Spike Plate! That was so crates. Be excellent to each other. And party on, dudes! I think this has uh, pudding in it. And the proof is in the pudding, guys. Oh, wait, no. Me refrigerated methane. Yeah. So, okay. I'm going to do my thing here for a second, fellas. You want to learn a little bit about trucks. So, per Department of Transportation rules, actually, it, it's pretty much everyone does this. Like, it's not just the U.S. Department of Transportation, but it falls under DOT. The trucks have to indicate what they're carrying. They have to indicate what it's carrying, and in this particular case, if it's flammable or not. See the, see the, see that this is fine icon above that? That means there is flammable stuff in here. And then the number corresponds to what it is. So 1972 is liquid methane. Seriously, this is fine. That guy in the video had his gun. Is that normal? He's the security guard, Clutch. So you have to indicate what it is. Different colors indicate different types of materials. Red means it's flammable. So they have a red color and a picture and a number denoting what it is and if it's flammable. You can tell, and this is not just at SpaceX or at Boca Chica. Like, look over there. See green? Green means it's inert gas. Uh, that one is something 45. That's helium. I, I know it's helium. I, I forget what helium's number is. Someone will probably look it up right now. But, uh, yeah, this is carrying refrigerated liquid methane. The other thing to tell is that this trailer has an air conditioner attached to it. Well, how do we know? Well, this big thing in the back is a nice big air conditioner. This is called a, a, a reefer tanker. So, yeah, it's got a refrigerator attached to the back. And that keeps the liquid methane liquid methane. Because if you heat up liquid methane, it's going to turn to gaseous methane. And gaseous methane is four-fifths four hydrogen. Hydrogen blows things up really well. Or hydrogen, well, hydrogen lights on fire. Very, 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 um, very efficient, efficient explosion. Yeah, so, yeah, you got to keep it cool or else it'll turn to gas. Keep the fart juice cool. Yep. Yeah, those hazmat placards are cool. If you see, if you drive around on the highway, you know, you see a truck with it, what it, it is indicating what road, what, what road, what load he's carrying. Uh, yeah, you can always tell what, what different trucks are carrying. The most common ones that you probably see in the U.S., unless you live near an industrial site, is 1203 and 19, or, yeah, 1203 and 1993, which is diesel fuel or gasoline. What road are you carrying? I don't know, man. I hope it's light. Did you know that nicotine is 1654? I didn't know that. No. When I when I eat Mexican food, I place one of those on the gene on your jeans. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is methane. Yeah, methane and sulfur and 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 tacos. Whew. Okay. Uh, anyway, you guys were talking about the guy that was strapped here. Hold on. Ah. Uh. Yeah, yeah. Let me see. Yeah, he's strapped. What has he got? Fellas, I'm not going to lie to you. That looks like a taser. But it is Texas, so it's probably not a taser. I don't know. I can't really tell. It's hard to say what that is. That is a taser. Yep. I think you're right, it's a taser. Yeah, homeboy's got homeboy's packing a taser. That's not yeah, that's not a firearm. You boys still got it. Don't tase me, bro! With that being said, guys, I, I, I don't make it a thing to mention it because it's not really pertinent information. But then again, I do point out all the stupid trucks that I like. Um yeah, guys, there's we've seen the security guards around Boca Chica strapped. Oh yeah, they're not. <laughs> I've seen I've seen the security guards there before, and they were they were not carrying tasers. Yeah, in the past, I've seen I've seen fully kitted out guys like that that have like a flak jacket on and stuff. 
You love that truck? Ew. That? No. Abandoned. No, don't, stop making yourself look stupid. Come on. Come on. Come on. Damn you, now I want tacos. You're welcome. I'm not sure what those are. An afford a body. <laughs> okay, I'll admit that's pretty funny, but also, Trippy, you shut your mouth. <laughs> I'll admit that that's funny, but also, frick you. All plants that are dealing with flammables in Texas do not allow firearms in the plant area. I would not be surprised if Starbase is now falling under that rule. Yeah, yeah, Zeppelin, you know what? That's probably a good idea. Yeah. Like, it's Texas, so it's got, you know, it's either going to take a, an act of God to say, no, you can't take your gun here, or it's because there's a really, really important law of physics. Like, it, you know, it takes a lot to, for, for Texas to be like, no, don't do that. But if they say don't do that, I believe them. Oh, there's the welder. Look at that thing. What the hell? Look at the circumferential welder. That's so cool. Ah, I see what they're doing. You guys know what those are? Who knows what those are? I know what those are. Ah, hey, Air Boris, that's too real. I, I, haven't we been real enough today? <laughs> too, too real, man. <laughs> Do those refrigerator tankers use a PTO or a diesel engine? I'm going to guess a diesel engine. They're measuring... They're measuring the distance between two points right there. At least I think that's what those are. That welder, though. Nerd. Yep. They're making sure that the that the rings were seated correctly when it weld that when it got welded that it didn't warp. It didn't bend in one direction or another. That's ship twenty four, guys. Yeah. Ship twenty four. Nice. And that's all, that's all that we got from Starship today. Let's see what else do we have there. Guys, did you know that they're still doing helicopter on Mars? What do you think the white substrate material is? Uh, cilia. It looks like cilia fibers, but it could be Nomex. I'm not 100% on that one, Zeppelin. It was stuck for a bit, yep. But yeah, they are still, in fact, doing helicopter on Mars. Did you know they did it? You, if you didn't know that they did helicopter on Mars, now you know. They also did surgery on a grape. It's an old meme. It's still funny. I, at least I still find it funny. What do you want? What do you want from me? It's funny. It's hilarious. Right, they did surgery on a grape. They did. What? They did surgery on a grape. You can't explain that. All right? They did helicopter on Mars. It's an old meme. It's an old meme, sir. But it checks out. But it checks out. Yep. Bellabopter. Tide goes in. Tide goes out. You can't explain. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. I'm kind of surprised they're not even attempting to use prop wash to blow the dust off of the old rover. Uh, you talking about Mars Insight? Winter Scythe, uh, Insight is not near <laughs> Ingenuity. Um, yeah, it's not even close. Yeah, they're, they're not near each other, man. That would be a good idea if they were near each other. 
Helicopter on Titan is in development. Astro, there was a there was a guy in here that was that came in that said he was uh he was working on that project. I forget the dude's name. I'm usually I'm usually better at that. What? Oh, excuse me, right about there's the space news yawns. Right about oh wait, gravity is one third on Mars. It's it's the moon that's one sixth. That's correct. Mm-hmm. They also did surgery on a banana from the other side of the world. Explain that. No, <laughs> I don't want to. <laughs> so this happened. Um, yeah. <laughs> what would you do? If I recall correctly, one rover used a dust devil to clean the solar panels one time. Yep, 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 yep. I sat in on a development meeting this fall with it for other PhD students. Astro, was that you that was telling me about that? Was that you? I forget now. That's, yeah, that's cool. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Okay. Christian, what's that? So, yeah, this is the damage to my vehicle. Um, yeah. What the frick, dude? Yo, who... Did you piss somebody off? Because that's... So, yeah, this is the damage to my vehicle. Um... Frick? Who'd you piss off, man? Damn. Somebody went at your car with a hammer. What the frick? What the f That's some ex-girlfriend stuff, man. Who'd you piss off? Nobody does that unprovoked. What happened? What, what'd you do? I mean, that sucks, man. Front passenger. It knew they were trying to steal either the vehicle or something inside. Damage behind that is old hail damage. Oh. That's, yeah, okay, that's hail damage. So this right here, huh? What the? Well, nobody, nobody said that people that steal things were smart. This person somehow managed to throw a brick at tempered glass and not break it. So, I mean, you have to be a special kind of dumb to, to, to not... To literally throw a brick at tempered glass and not break the thing. That's like, all right. Unless there's, unless there's safety glass, dude. <laughs> Nobody said people that steal things are smart, man. I mean, all you literally have to do is tap that window and it'll shatter. <laughs> all right. Pull up safety glass. Oh, wow, even better. So this person 
wanted, saw something in your car, wanted to steal it, threw a brick at it, partially cracked the glass and said, oh, okay, and then ran away? I don't think so. I applied for one of the student projects, but the main one I applied for didn't get funded. They like my background enough, though, to sit in on it. I'm going to try to get, apply again spring to work on it. Cool, Astro. Neat. Guys, it was way off. Now they toss it at the vehicle four or five times. I, I don't know. I don't know, man. I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. Yeah. Dude, I live in a pretty safe neighborhood. I don't leave stuff in the car. I don't leave stuff in the car and I lock the car every time. But honestly, Christian, you probably don't want to hear ways to not get your car broken into right now, so I'm going to shut up. Yeah, double nuts. That's my guess, dude. I don't have a car, so that helps. <laughs> can't have stu I can't have stuff stolen from your car if you don't have one. <laughs> yep. All right, guys. I think uh, I think we're good on space news, um, unless oh there is a, there is one other thing. Um, I think I got most of it. Uh, we got the Tory talk. We got Ghost T. We got Artemis. Uh, Kyron, yeah. it needed to be said, man, and now's the time to do it. From the inside. And this is what's all over the inside of my vehicle. Oof. Oof. Ugh. Yeah, that's no good. Yeah, around about it happens. Did you see the video of Tori on a horse? That's how I started Space News, believe it or not. Um, I think I got all of it. So, fellas, once again, this is one of those space news that I think is pertinent to listen to uh, or to understand uh, that this last bit, it's actually, it's pertaining to current events. But uh, yeah, take it for what it's worth here. Check it out. So it looks like the technical mi or minister of digital trans transformation of Ukraine asked Elon Musk if they could turn on Starlink over the Ukraine and he did. Okay. So there's that happening. All right. The uh, guy turned on Starling. All right. <laughs> Asking you shall receive, I guess. Yeah, see, Antic, it really, it really depends on where you live, dude. Not really asked as much as talk crap about him and then ask. I mean, I'm pretty sure if you asked, you know, you probably would have. E Elon Musk seems very, uh, very freedom oriented. I mean, he's self described as nauseatingly pro American. So, I mean, and that was that's from a long time ago. That was from years ago. So, I mean, yeah. I mean, he also crap posted and slam dunked on Dimitri on Twitter. If you guys want to, if you guys want to see that, I, I went into you know D Dimitri talking about you know uh, before I went into him talking about who's gonna like who's gonna do things at the space station. But uh, you know, here check this out. You know, you're saying you know. If you block cooperation, who will save the United States? Who will save the ISS from an uncontrolled deorbit? And he. <laughs> <laughs> I dude I don't understand that we're we're literally watching international diplomacy pan out on Twitter like 
what is happening? <laughs> L plus ratio. Yeah. <laughs> this, this, is, this is 2022, I guess, man. At least, at least it's not boring, I guess. I mean, I'll take boring at this point, but damn, dude. <laughs> It's like real life hearts of iron. It so is, dude. I can't, I can't believe this. That's gonna be in the history books, homies. Can you believe that? That's gonna be in the history books. And this is the point where, you know, <laughs> inter no, the history book will be like internet infographics such as this posted by the Ukraine in 2022 were key points in getting the public out, getting public outreach and information about about said wars like that's gonna be in the history books like all right <laughs> all right <laughs> historians will have to start study crap yeah they'll start have to study crap posting what is going on I mean hey what you know, I don't know I don't know man I I think that's funny it's also not funny the reason why it's happening but that's ridiculous. What is this tweet by Wayne Hale? The Wayne Hale's a shuttle flight controller. What is he saying? I don't Thinking about Barbara Barbara Tuckman's Guns of August where King Albert and the citizens of Belgium fought the massive um, fought a massive invading army in 1914. What Belgium gave the allies was neither 2 days nor 2 weeks but a cause and an example. I am not familiar with this. Are there any Belgian people around that can, or, or people that are familiar with this that can clue me in? I don't know what I don't know what he means. What's what's Guns of August? Yeah, Kyron, right. I want to cancel my subscription to Global Crisis Global Crisis Yearly, please. Yeah, there is some there do be some bugs in the simulation, absolutely. Yeah, hey, run about it. At least it's not boring, you know? That's I, I, I don't get me wrong, I'd prefer boring. Yeah. But yeah, at least it's not boring. I think I know, but it's too much to type. All right, let's take a look. Guns of August. The Guns of August, 1962, published in the UK as August 1914, is a volume of history by Barbara W. Tuckman. It is centered on the first month of World War One. In introductory chat, after introductory chapters, Tuckman describe, describes in great detail the opening events of the conflict its focus and then becomes a military history of the contestants, chiefly the great powers. The Guns of August thus provides a narrative of the earliest stages of World War I. Oh dear. From the decisions to go to war up until the start of the Franco-British offensive that stopped the German advance into France. The result was four years of trench warfare. In the course of her narrative, Tuck, 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 Tuckman, I'm not sure if it's Tuckman or Touchman, I'll just say Tuckman, and if I'm saying it wrong, I, I apologize. Uh, in the course of her narrative, Tuckman includes discussion of the planned strategies, world events, and international sentiments before and during the war. The book was awarded the Pulitzer Prize for general nonfiction for publication in the year 1963 and proved to be very popular. Tuckman later returned to the subject of the social attitudes and issues that existed before World War I, which she had touched upon in the Guns of August. Uh, Guns of August. In a collection of eight essays published in 1966 under the title The Proud Tower, A Portrait of the World Before the War, 
I'm pretty sure what Wayne's trying to say there is uh, that you, you, Ukraine is setting the example for how we how we deal with this problem. I, I'm pretty sure that's the gist of it, but I could be wrong. Maybe Google spell her name? I'm good. All right, dudes. I think it refers to the Battle of Legion, August of 1914. Yep, yep. Uh, sorry, there was a thread that popped up on in Twitter, and I hate that I I hate that I want to read it. Oh, thanks, thanks, Black Horse. I appreciate it. Did you see that there was a battle over Chernobyl and Pripyat? Yes. Mm -hmm. Sorry, give, give me one second, guys. I just want to... Thread on... No, thread. Thread, not threat. Twitter threads be like that way right now. Yeah, no, it, that picture of a T72 caught my attention. I hate, I hate that I, I hate that I do that. I can't stand it. Yeah, hotbox. I know, right? Isn't that strange? Like, okay, if this is how, if this is how we do this now. Yeah, Sparky. Yeah, they set the set the example. Yeah, yeah. Technically, technically, Twitter is a threat to your IQ. It depends on what you read. You just give, give me a moment, fellas. I'm I'm, I'm interested to hear. The AC background is good ASMR. Yeah, thought you might like it. Here, I'll do this while I'm reading. What? You don't like you don't like river rocks? two coconuts and you're banging them together. No, you gotta whisper it into the mic, dude. I, no, I don't want to do that. Don't make me do that. Don't fondle your stones on stream, man. That's not cool. You're right. You're right. You're right. It's actually this is actually a really interesting thread. I mean, it's a thread about a thread about what's going on in Ukraine, but yeah. Hmm. Yeah, here I'll, I'll post it in chat if you guys want to read it. It's, it's pretty interesting stuff. I don't want to post something, but it's very rule eight. You guys, just look. Just because we decided to get into it today, doesn't mean we should. You know, like so. If people want to read that thread, go for it. Um, I'm gonna load up Kerbal. All right. I'm gonna I'm gonna save that thread for later. All right, so. Finally, evidence EJ has stones. Not so big, but I have them. Ooh. 
and you have to stare at them now.